nine invited players who had got themselves the invitation here uh, by their performances of last year. And we also had some players from open qualifications to see who will be the player who will get the Baltic Trackmania Champion title. If we actually look on who will be playing, there's a small list of players it's going to be. So as mentioned, we have 16 players here as the players are currently starting to do their seedings. Uh, the 16 players are Ziren and Auris, who are representing Owned, Arvito, uh, Carlocchi, Morioka, Creedy, Ieva, Crazy Cat, Vigno, Rokas, uh, Luckier, Bits, Marcelli, Hapox and Greatis. Rizen sadly was not available to play today, so we'll have 15 player pool uh, for today. But thankfully we're still gonna have some proper matches being played out uh, today. So this solo event was gonna last for two days. Today we're gonna have the Swiss stage or group stage. Uh, it's gonna be, have, gonna, there's gonna be a small seating phase where the players are gonna uh, just do a light check-in. Uh, and also to, they're gonna do the seating to start off with their placement at the start of Swiss. So in Swiss, it's gonna be pretty simple. During today, we're gonna have 1v1v1 matches. In the first three rounds, there's gonna be matches of four. If you get top two in a match, you get a win. Bottom two, you get a loss. If you get three wins, you qualify for tomorrow. Then the earlier the qualifier, the higher seed you get for tomorrow's brackets. If you get three times the bottom placements, uh, bottom 50%, then you're gonna be eliminated. And you play against the same people who have the same win-loss record as well. If you want to understand how this format works uh, in precise detail, I would highly recommend checking out with the exclamation mark brackets uh, so you can see uh, the matchups uh, and how will the brackets will fold as it will be updated as the event will go by. So today we're gonna have played out, play, we're gonna play out the uh, Swiss stage and the group stages to decide who is gonna be our top eight players. And in the meanwhile, we can uh, have a light introduction to some of the players that we have here. First, we have Freedy, managed to qualify into the, actually earned an invitation uh, to the Baltic Mania Championship solo event with his performances in BTL, where he was, I believe, with the average rank of 8th. As uh, he was a top 8 player comparing to the Ball Baltic League uh, events that happened during last year. Howard is one of the, I would say, most known players internationally. Uh, with as he now gets seed 1 on this map so far. Uh, then we have also Dvigno. Managed to... was really really close on getting his first Baltic Trackmania League title in the spring season. Sadly did not work out and got sniped in the end in a quadruple finalist against uh, his compatriot Kuzi. But uh, also has earned a spot in here. Arvito had a really sick run in the previous Baltic Trackmania League where he managed to place third even above Abauris and uh, all of the other Latvian players and was the best performing uh, Latvian player actually in the last Baltic Trackmania. Then we have Karluki who's also I would say one of the most... How can I say? One of the mappers we have in the Baltic scene. Actually this is his map that's currently being played in his city. Has can show up some proper pace. I haven't really seen that many notable tournament results. He did get top 8 in the previous Baltic Truck Mania League, so let's see what he can do here with that. Actually, he got the invitation to this event. Also, as we saw, a lot of these players had, did play in the team events, except with, uh, uh, with I believe, uh, Mr. Greatis, who I believe is playing on the other server. Then we have Hapux as well. He's one of the players who did came from the Open Qualifier. Had him. I believe he played in the Amateur uh, Division. Uh, in the spring season, in the first time in the summer season of last year's Baltic Trophy League, got into the top 16 for the first time. Uh, was really close as well on uh, pace-wise uh, to the top uh, contenders as well, but sadly didn't get the best result in, but still uh, managed to show himself that he can still be a top 16 here and uh, got himself into the placement of this event from the open balls. Uh, then we have Eva as well. Yeah, as well has been competing since the very first Baltic Trackmania uh, Championship event in 2020 when it was still held in Trackmania 2 Stadium and uh, managed to get her first uh, uh, top 8 in the Baltic Trackmania League Summer season which was the previous uh, league's edition uh, where got her first top 8. She said he really wants to get a top 8 this time around so let's see what if that will be the case. Then we have Bits, so one of the in the, during the 2010s, especially the late 2010s, one of the best players and key players we had from the Baltic scene. 
had been when the start of the, the Baltic events, had been actually one of the most winningest players, won the first Baltic Mania Championship, also won a Baltic Trek Mania League beta season and the first two seasons of Baltic, Baltic Trek Mania League as well. In uh, recently, didn't have that great performances, except in the Comic-Con Baltics event in Vilnius, where he managed to place top 6, which was actually higher than his uh, Baltic Trek Mania League performances. Uh, then we have uh, Crazy Cat with the Gato Kid Passo rename, but he's gonna appear as Crazy Cat in the afterwards in the matches. Uh, was playing together with Karluki under the name of Latvian Bullets during the Trackmania Road Tour, and um, also played under the name of Latvian Bullets in uh, the team event where uh, they did get fifth place. Uh, but um, let's see what he can do when, uh, as individuals, Crazy Cat still hasn't gotten a top eight placement into the solo events, but always was around the 9th to 12th range, with uh, his consistency actually earned an invite uh, to the uh, Baltic Trek Mania League, uh, sorry, Baltic Trek Mania Championship solo event with that. Then if we go down the list, we have Marcelli, uh, currently the captain for the team Baltic Vikings as well. Also was in the same case, it's like the Estonian version of Crazy Cat, always has been uh, around the 9th to 12th in the Baltic Trek Mania League events. Was really, really close on qualifying to the Comic-Con Baltics event, sadly did not manage to, uh, manage to get through the qualifier uh, for the solo event. I believe where he actually won the qualifier, just above Rokas. And uh, that's why we see him here as well, Latvian player Luckier, his first time ever at his first top 16 in a Baltic event. Uh, previously he did play in amateur tournaments, he had played in a bunch of quick learn events, where he actually did and not too bad as well, getting some top fours, uh, even some uh, known global names as well. And uh, this is his first time making appearance in a Baltic tournament top 16. Then we have Ziren currently hinting the seating a bit, uh, being in last uh, so far. Uh, Ziren is uh, one of the, I would say, skill base wise, potentially one of the players with the highest speed compared to his uh, global scene interaction. Uh, has been a very consistent uh, cup of the day player in Div 1 and uh, one of the most fastest improving uh, Lithuanian players that we have here in the player pool as well has been ha getting some decent BTL performances himself when he started competing in uh, winter 2022 season he did get his first top 16 and afterwards he got only top 4s but even though he was looking as a top contender he always chokes it at the end, just like this uh, nice metaphor that he showed with his warm-up right there. Previously, he got second and fourth, uh, fourth. so let's see what uh, uh, the 17-year-old can do this time around. Uh, as we have uh, also Morioka currently leading the standings, currently one of the most, uh, we could say, the most uh, winningest of players that we have in the Baltic scene. Player who actually has the most wins in Baltic tournaments, has two Telia Trackmania tournament wins, uh, one at the previous edition of Baltic Trackmania League. He started competing in uh, Trackmania 2 Stadium at the end of its lifespan, and now has mainly competed in Baltic tournaments. We'll love to see him also play some international stuff, but here he tries to go for another win, as currently he is the one who leads the seeding uh, so far as there's two minutes more to go, as we'll, we'll we go uh, through the seeding phase. Afterwards, uh, after the seeding will be done, uh, the players are gonna be um, gonna be placed in a Swiss-based uh, bracket. So in the four matches of four, uh, I believe there's gonna be one match that will gonna have uh, 13 players. As we have some players, uh, well, Rizen mentioned that he won't be attending uh, this part of the event. So let's see what uh, what will be the final placements. Currently, Ziren finally got his run in pretty close times, actually, if you look at the leaderboard. Uh, only 0.2 difference between, even 0.3 difference between the majority of the times. Looks like Marcelli, Luckier, and Crazy Cat don't have the that close of a pace, but everyone else is looking really, really close time-wise, as we see a 0.23 down to a 0.57 from 1st to 10th. And as this is, uh, as some people call it, the hardest map in the pool, 
where they can see that we can get gonna potentially kind of get some really close rounds here as we saw that in the team event consistency was the main separator between the players so not only you need to kind of maintain the pace that everyone else can uh, push you and punish you for but your main thing is trying to maintain a consistency as with, we are going to be producing the cup game modes or cup classic to be precise but there's going to be 1v1 matches top two will advance the players will have uh, four rounds on each of the maps in a randomized order and they will collect points based on their placements in each of the rounds and uh, after they will hit 100 points limit they will need to win a round to secure their position that's the way how the game mode will be played as looks like the players are currently finishing up as looks like Morioka is probably gonna take first place into the first round as the matches will about to be generated as well also if you want to see a bit more up to bay date automatic matchups before because the bracket ones are gonna be manually updated I highly suggest checking out trackmedia.io where you're gonna see the timeout or see from in-game to see the individual matchups on uh, how it will be played out with the results and how each separation looks like that Rokas, Gratis and Risen aren't ones that showed up so that's very unfortunate for that side especially because with the new names uh, yeah I haven't seen that especially it was nice that it was notified from uh, Risen that he won't be so there was gonna be a light punishment towards Rokas for not notifying the participation or the fact that they did not show up so there's gonna be a bit of a problem for them afterwards uh, but yeah so either way we're gonna be done with the qualifiers and let's see the first matchups usually let's go with the match number uh, let's go with match number two three four let's say match number three so let's see what will be this match uh, as this okay let me find a bit better match that we have here all right let's actually go with oh this one seems a bit better match uh, match number two, which is gonna be Kredi Ziren, Lucky Error, and Gatto Kitpas. <laughs> His new name, man, it's so uh, hard to say. Uh, which is uh, Crazy Cats, but thankfully is gonna be displayed normally. <laughs> and then some other people <laughs> have, uh, as he, sim uh, he himself has name uh, named on the server. So yeah, thankfully we can like change the names, so it's at least a bit nicer to say. But yeah, either way, let's uh, check the final placements that we had in the qualifiers. So Morioka is a seed number, seed number one, as he goes into the seeding place number uno. Uh, Auris is actually seed number two, so it's gonna give him a nice advantage. Vigno is a seed number three uh, in these matchups. Greedy is seed number four. Uh, Kredi actually hasn't gotten the best performances lately, but he's really really motivated to finally show himself what he can do in these events. Has been pracking and scrimming a lot with a lot of the players as well and trying to make a name for himself. Ziren in 5th in seeding didn't get that as we saw. He had a really sick run in but sadly didn't get to snatch that seed number 1 spot. Eva is actually seed number 6 which is a really nice surprise. Um, Karluki is seed number 7, so two new surprises we see in the top 8, uh, in the seeding placement that we have. Arvito is seed number 8, so there are already some interesting names that, uh, let's just say like that, uh, making a nice surprise for now. Uh, then we have Bits in seed number 9, just outside of the top 8. Hapux we have in seed number 10. Like I said, one of the up-and-coming players in the top 16 has got like top 8 performances in the Estonian only uh, Telia tournaments. Uh, Marcelli is gonna be in 11th. Uh, Crazy Cat is gonna be in seed number uh, seed number 12, and Luckier is gonna be in seed number 13. And Rokas, Risen, and Great is gon gonna get a DNS. Uh, which is gonna uh, cause them a small problem potentially after this. So now the, how the match is gonna work out, we're gonna have, we're gonna be watching the Greedy, Crazy Cat, Luckier and Ziren match. The top two players from this match are gonna advance into the top or top match or the 1-0 match. Uh, and also the seeding a bit relies as well. So if you finish the match uh, a bit earlier, 
basically you get you get the first place you can get you're gonna be playing against the seed number two from the other top match so it can give your match a tiny bit easier chance so even if you every single position matters even for the players who are not gonna be are gonna be at the bottom side i uh, gonna have a Especially the players who are going to be at the bottom side, or uh, let's just say like that, even if they place third, it's still going to be way better for them than afterwards. Alright, so here we come, we have Ziren, Luckier, Greedy and Crazy Cats. That's going to be the, the matchup we're going to have. So Ziren representing Owns, a team that managed to get a team competition win uh, last week. Uh, Creedy representing Vortex, which has been uh, one of the oldest Estonian organizations uh, in esports. And uh, re I believe in 2021 they did enter Trackmania. With a bunch of Estonian, pretty solid Estonian players under the representation. And we have uh, Latvian Bullets uh, with uh, Crazy Can being represented as well. Alright, let's see how this match goes. Uh, looks like Ziren is with the early mishap in the round one. In a nice fight as it's out between Greedy and Crazy Cat. Crazy Cat always was lacking a bit of hay spice, but his consistency was the main thing that allowed him to go high in the standings. He's being chased with, uh, with a luckier who has his first top 16 appearance in a Baltic event so far. Looks like Greedy trying to snag in. Light mistake there from luckier. It looks like that Greedy is going to take his first opening round win as he's going to get a 49. So we have seen that 48-6 is the new uh, world record on this map, which was done during the preparation after the country events. And uh, let's see how it will go. So Greedy with a nice opening so far. Crazy Cat as well. Even though he is uh, one of the lower seeded players here, definitely gives him at least that nice points bonus. Even if he doesn't make it out to the top two, he still upset some players in terms of seeding. Is it trying to not get a mistake this time around? Oh, Crazy Cat had to readjust his line. Lost a bit of momentum. Good to that. Is it and Creedy? Trying to fight for the top. Greedy had to recorrect the line. Lost a bit of momentum. Is trying to push for the pace? Had a really solid regular. Uh, during the team event, we're doing 0.8 and 0.9 regu on this track. Majority of players have a low 49 that they can do here. Looks like Lucky are trying to attack for the fourth position. Greedy, very sketchy line there, managed to survive in the first 48 of the day, uh, delivered by Ziren. Ziren only got five points previously, at least that 10 pointer will give him a nice bonus. And now looks like Crazy Cat and Ziren are gonna be tied. Actually, no, Crazy Cat with that uh, third position is going to be overtaken by Ziren and the Greedy and Ziren now in the 1 and 2. Currently on map 1. Looks like Akira with a bit of a safe start there. Maybe trying to push for everything. So, like, good start from Crazy Cat once again, despite being one of the bottom seeds. Still pretty nice. Uh, like, oh, yeah, 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 too bit of an early line there, and it uh, turns into a duel between the Lithuanian and uh, the Estonian, and the Ziren clips, and it actually now so it gives a nice chance for both Luckier and the Crazy Cat to get the overtake, but for Greedy, those are some nice free 10 points right there, but for Luckier as well, a 7-pointer is not too shabby. Now, Greedy got a lot of momentum there, had to go, got a pretty outside line. Had to readjust, but uh, Luckier is not gonna mind those seven points. I'm gonna try to play the safeguard, just to play on other players' mistakes. And with that, he gets some points, reduces the points gap, but still, Ziren still holds on on the second place so far in the standings. As so we're going into round four, Ziren already touched as well, gonna lose, drop a lot of points. With the good old classic Lithuanian consistency. Nice cat once again. Leading, having a solid start. Crazy Cat has been also playing Trackmania for more than 10 years. Had a massive break um, before, uh, during the TM2 era. Has been, basically, has been playing since TNMNF, but didn't touch the game during TM2. So recently starting to be the rust during the last two years. I'm getting more comfortable with the new game and definitely 
trying to break in at that top eight in the Baltics finally. And since the competition scene is getting more and more established, Ziren is getting a really bad start and goes for a full DNF. He's actually gonna be really good for the points for Crazy Cat. And the uh, Creedy in meanwhile gets a solid another start of the round as he enters the map one with 37 points. Only dropping one position and the DNF from Ziren allows now Crazy Cat to go for the second place. Ziren has been like taking a look as one of the favorites uh, we had uh, for the uh, from the Baltic scene. So let's see how what he will do. He always goes for full pace, but doesn't really adapt or play the game mode that much. It's kind of one of his biggest weaknesses. Just usually when he plays in events like this. Alright, let's see what's gonna go on this map. This map is definitely the one that can punish the mistakes more. A lot of precise lines, a bit of a one-liner as I call it. However, there's a really risky line there here at the start. That does save around 0.2 if you get it well. Looks like both Greedy and Ziren got, went for it and got it. Didn't get the best momentum, but still got the upper advantage over Crazy Cat. Go up for the safer line. I'm leaving Crazy Cat's place. I would myself I'll go for the safe line in my, as well. Just one small touch at the start, or if you take the line a bit too much to the outside, you get easily tossed into the wall. Speaking of touching into the wall, Ziren having a light touch gets overtaken by both Latvians already. Quidi as well having a pretty nice and easy match, just trying to play it safe. And just trying to make consistency, no one seems to have a light mistake. Ziren trying to push, trying to snacking at least on a couple of points from Lockyer. Looks like no one crashes, solid run from everyone. And even that light tap there from Ziren put him at the bottom of the field. It allowed both Latvians now to get some points. It's actually no Crazy Cat, starts a bit more solidified in the second place. It's actually pretty good for the Latvian player. See what Ziren can do with start, goes full risk, touches the wall. Yeah, he was a bit too much to the side, as I said previously. Like, it is all a faster line. But, uh, main problem with now with Ziren is, yes, he can be really fast, but... If you don't play the game mode what it wants, then you're not gonna be rewarded for it. It's not time attack, where the peak time counts. It's where, uh, you know, the most... You need to kind of be in front of the other players to uh, win here. Peak time is just as a just can, helps you with. Uh, it doesn't. There's no bonus for having the fastest time. So due to that, Ziren has been sacrificing his match today. Actually, Luckier is not playing too bad as well, having showing a way better consistency. And as well, Crazy Cat as well doing the same. But in the meanwhile, oh yo 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 yo, where is Ziren? Uh, Ziren is a bit too far behind. Even with that small bump, Luckier still gets the finish above of Ziren. Crazy as well, point three, uh, solid time there. Crazy Cat as well, not too bad of a time. Point six. But yeah, with that, Ziren is at last in the round one. Which is uh, definitely gonna potentially spice up round two. If Ziren starts to bit snap back to reality, you know. Yeah, Ziren once again going for the risky line. Finally gets it. Luckier tried to get a really awkward li entry line there. Had to readjust it, lost a bit of momentum with that. Yeah, Crazy Cat as well in both greedy. I'm literally just playing the match quite solidly, just literally no mistakes, just playing it nice and consistent. You know, Ziren just full sends every single time and crashes out with 80% of rounds. It'll be interesting to see the crash rate on solos compared to the same as we had in teams. I believe his crash rate will probably be around 70% or something. But that we have a pretty nice fight at top, considering this is round one as well. Oh, Greedy gets way better momentum, both fighting for those 10 points. Greedy, Ziren really needs to get finally something going and he gets it, but that's because Greedy made a mistake, immediately only gets 3 points. And this will allow Ziren to catch up, but there is again, Crazy Cat just playing safe. Solid actually, 0.6 regio from world record, like this regio from Crazy Cat is actually pretty solid. And he just checks in those plus 7, plus 7, plus 7, plus 7. Someone messes up in the middle, he just gets a nice bonus, and uh, 
and stays at the leaderboard despite being that bottom seed. Almost it and again went for the risky line. Got a pretty good. Got that 0.1 or 0.2 time save that you can get from it. Greedy in the meanwhile having his first larger mistake of the match. He's now Ziren trying to collect another 10 pointer. Now lucky you're actually in the second place. Bit of a wobbly part. Oh yo 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 Ziren with the El Clasico. What on earth is that? And now both Latvians are actually one and two. The bottom seed of the brackets is currently fighting. Two bottom seeds from the seeding phase are fighting for the top points, just trying to play safe their game and just cash in some free points from the mistake of Estonian and the Lithuanian. Looks like Razika is gonna get his first round win here. Ooh, you, 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 gets a small bounce there. Played it quite safe. Went a bit too safe at the end, but still. No point of risking it if everyone else has crashed. And with that, Lucky Error gets a plus 7, Crazy Cat plus 10. And Ziren once again crashes out in one round. And with that, Ziren is back at the bottom with the leaderboard. One thing to mention, we're playing with a good old classic cup mode. Still two winners, but third and fourth position place matters for the seeding for next round as well. So if you get third place, we're going to be playing against fourth place uh, from the other matches. And you get a bit easier match. Especially when you're gonna be in the lower side. Alright, next map is gonna be Calgario. So in Swiss stage, in every single round, there's a bit of a shuffled uh, map order. When the players are gonna get in the playoffs, which is gonna be tomorrow for the top 8. Uh, there, there's gonna be a bit more... Uh, there's gonna be a pick and ban uh, done before every single match. But right now in Swiss, we have a randomized map order. So players need to adapt the rounds, but everyone has been pretty similar. So let's see what goes here Cal on Calgario. We saw Ziren was the only player to do a sub-51 on this map. So hopefully he can get a nice bounce back. If we look at the points, Ziren is the one that really needs them the most, but his crashes were not helping at all. Everyone just trying to do the reverse opposite what happened in a teams and country event, where there were a lot of mistakes happening. And looks like everyone's starting to learn their consistency card a bit better. Lucky are trying to play it safe. When, as mentioned, Lucky are for the first time making top 16 in a, in a Baltic tournament. Just trying to play the safe card. As I said to him, just try to play safe, wait on others' mistakes, and that's how you're gonna climb up. And so far, that has been helping him especially to overtake Ziren at some point. So it looks like Ziren's gonna be a pretty sick time. Risk for the low jump as well. He actually got a slowdown there at the end. Point four opener. That's the fastest time there, especially because both Latvians had a small mistake early on. But Ziren still gets the 10-pointer that is much needed for him. And with that still, there's a pretty noticeable points gap between Crazy Cat and Ziren for the top two. Like getting in the top side of brackets definitely gonna make your, uh, I just say like that, gonna give way more safety net uh, during the span of the brackets. And uh, I think if Crazy Cat still maintains his position here and especially gets consistency, it could finally result him in his that first top eight placement. The Ziren once again has a small El Clasico moment and light touch, but it's unfortunately luckier as well. A light touch there as well, but a pretty nice duel that we have at the top between Crazy Cat and Greedy, the seed number 4 against seed number 12 that we had from the seeding phase. So Crazy uh, Greedy got to turn way better. Crazy Cat trying to catch it, but Greedy's really pushing it over those lines. Greedy even goes for the low jump, gets another point four. But still Ziren at the bottom, where is Luckier? Luckier actually got the end, Ziren messed up the end in the end. Ziren's definitely not, sh good in good, not showing good consistency at all. I believe he's has crashed way more times than got clear runs in, so definitely his consistency rate is above uh, 50%, uh, or below 50%, 100%. Yeah, Crazy Cat and Greedy are now a bit running away with the points, which is quite unexpected. A pretty solid match we have here for round one. Oh, Ziren clips and both 17-year-olds currently at the bottom of the rounds. Crazy Cat got a bit of air time there, got pushed out the outside, got snacked in by both Luckier and Ziren. They're trying to play, so trying to control his score. It's immediately caught up by Ziren. 
Rudy as well he just stays at his star. Bit of a sketchy line there from Lockyer. Doesn't get the best momentum. Clips goes a bit too much inside. Clips from the center point as well. Creedy clips it. And Ziren gets clipped. Uh, clips on uh, Creedy as he snipes him at the very end. Where the two Latvians. Lockyer gets the plus five. And Luck Crazy Cat gets the bottom three. Uh, bad bottom uh, position with only those three points. And I believe this now allow Ziren to catch up to Crazy Cat. And that small mistake from Creedy, or that small snipe now. Uh, puts him now only 11 points away. So if Creedy had gotten uh, that win there, he would have been a round win away uh, from entering finalist already. Crazy Cat is down with a bit slower start. Gets solid extra speed. Is up to luckier. Not the skid lines a bit closed up. Got a bit of momentum. I'm not a fan of that crazy cat line. He goes a bit too much inside, which causes a small bump, which cancels out the speed and loses a bit of grip, especially during that tight part. So like Ziren is on a very good start here. Could be a potentially a point one. Ziren has been the only person to do a sub 51 here on this map, especially during a, a match. So let's see what kind of time that will be. It's going to be a point one fastest time of the day here. Uh, Creedy was really, really close, almost overtaken by Crazy Cat there, but still hold on on his second position. Looks like Ziren is slowly getting into the feel of the match a bit. But yeah, Creedy in the meanwhile is a top three position away from. Uh, from closing out his match, as mentioned, that the positions will matter for the next round seeding. So the top two players from each of the matches will be playing against each other. If you want to see how the bracket looks like, how the matchups look like, I would highly recommend using the exclamation mark bracket to give us a really nice overview of who will be playing against who. I'll be going at the yeah, Ziren is still going to be in probably a bit focus mode as well. Agartha is one of the, some people call it the hardest map, personally I think Karluki's map, uh, Wavelength is the hardest one, but some people found uh, this map, made by Wizzy, Agartha, to be the hardest map, but let's see, solid times here for rounds should be 101s, a really really good ones, could be around mid or lows in 101s, so let's see what players can do, oh yeah yeah, a bit of a swabbly start there by Lucky, it's a pretty start start, so this kind of forces you to take just one type of a line, Kind of makes the mistakes happen. One of the key parts of this map is getting a very solid entry into the ice slide and trying to do it without any major corrections, which gives the best momentum out of it. This crazy cat had a light correction at the start. It's the last drop a bit of momentum to Greedy and also allows now Ziren to catch up. Ziren gets away better, keeps his skin marks closer, gets a really nice there plastic wall hug, gets way better momentum, avoids the the wobble from the inside. Greedy got a really nice inside line there, but looks like Ziren is catching up. We have seen some mistakes popping up at the end due to players risking too much. Ziren goes for the more of inside line approach. Sacrifices exit speed. Ziren tried to push. Managed to survive even with the no steer. And uh, Ziren barely hold on in that second place there. But now Greedy is the first person to enter finalist mode. Uh, for in this uh, match. And actually for today... So now, with the final status, Greedy needs to win one round, and he locks himself as the top seed from this match, and we'll move on to the 1-0 round. He's gonna be playing against the other winners from the other four matches. Or as uh, one more winner and two second places. Easy Cat and Lockyer with the best start so far. So all four players are pretty close. Light release there from Luckier and Ziren. This is what I said. If you get so nice, nice direct entry with no large corrections, you get the best momentum. And that's what Greedy did there. Let's see if Greedy can close it out. Lucky Hero had to readjust. There's a big wobble that can happen here. Looks like all players got it. Got a nice slick entry. Maybe Luckier is the one who lost a bit of pace. Crazy Cat nicely holds on his first place. Greedy really, really trying to attack for that inside line. Doesn't lose a lot of momentum. It also overtaken by Ziren. Crazy Cat needs those big points to enter in 90s and a, I think a pretty solid time. Previously in Teams event we saw Crazy Cat's PB was only 0.9. So the fact that he did a 0.6 there, really good round from him. Crazy Cat's playing really good. I actually <laughs> love to see it. I don't want to be too biased, but I really, really like to see it. Um, 
But we'll see if he can close it out. Zidane needs 16 points to enter finalist. Greedy needs to win a round. Luckier needs to is a bit too far behind. But I think Luckier for the uh, how he has played in the past, this is a really nice accomplishment for him. Especially because this first time in a top 16 at a Baltic event. Oi, 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 crazy cat, light touch. Good outside line there from uh, Lakir. Got the most speed out of everyone. Oh, no corrections there. Light gear change. That's how got big best momentum out of it. Doesn't get the best entry in the dirt. Had to recorrect it due to that with the oversteers. Potentially now crazy cat as well had to overtake it. The two aggressive steering movements there from Lakir. Looks like Aorus and Ziren trying to fight it. Light clip there from Greedy. Tried to too much force the inside line. Got a light touch there. Oi, oi, oi. Clip there on the checkpoint. Luckier now jumps to second place. Ziren gets a free 10 points of today. Even risk for the end for some reason. But maybe risk for a good time. It wasn't that good of a time. Only 0.8. But still Luckier gets his plus 7 points. Can be useful for seeding as well. But Ziren enters as well to 94 as he over overtakes now crazy cat for the points so both zero and crazy cat need a top two in the next round to enter in finalist themselves and zero gets it then he gets a nice comeback into the match there's a bit more mana mistakes popping out out of crazy cat now See what happens there. In the meanwhile, we have some updates from some other matches. Vigno has uh, won his match against Iava and Marcelli, when uh, Iava moves on to the 1 0 round as well as scene number 2. And Marcelli will be one of the first players to be known in the lower rounds. Also, Auris has won his match against Karluki and Hapuk, so Karluki as well moves into his next round and Hapox will be joining into the lower side of matches due to that but in the meanwhile looks like Reedy is gonna be the first one to finish his match here with a 101 tried to play it safe at the end there and Reedy is gonna be the first one to get the top seed here and move on to the top side we'll have to play against Auris and Ieva in his next match so now one more spot left Crazy Cat unfortunately got the third, fourth place there, so he's four points away. So he needs to deny Ziren, unless uh, or Lucky or gets it going as well. He's actually going on a full map switch here. And also the third match, so this is the last match going, which actually was really close between Morioka Bits and Arvito. Where Morioka placed uh, first. Bits got second, got the seeding upsets there over Arvito. Now let's see what's gonna happen there. So as we go on down tempo, this was actually Creedy's favorite map. But he does hold the Baltic record. The world record here is by Epos, who did uh, during practice with uh, Dvigno. He set a 0.4 on this map, Well, majority of Baltic players have a 0.5, 0.6. Ooh, a very weird line there from Lucky or immediately puts him at the back. So Ziren has a nice advantage now going to the next round. One light clip there. He can mess his run up. Crazy Cat goes a bit wider lines, gets away better momentum. Bit of a middle, middle, middle line. They're a bit weird. Light clip from Ziren still gets some momentum going. Thankfully he has to slow down instantly. And uh, yeah, not the best line there. Gets a light touch, so Crazy Cat just needs to get us a relatively safe end. There's a very weird gear here where it's hard to maintain momentum. Goes for an inside line there, doesn't get the best exit speed, but it still will be enough to get the 10 pointer and the nice Ziren, the finalist here. As we're gonna go double finalist to see who's gonna be the second seed to go in the 1 0 match. Double finalist. Luckier also can potentially deny. The two Latvians don't have the slower start here. Luckier goes a bit too wide. Light clip from Sidren loses a bit of momentum. Despite getting a solid start, dropped the point two that he had plus the speed momentum. 
but he instantly gets overtaken by Crazy Cat. Siren goes for the full inside lock. Got the inside wall hug bump. He lost Speedway, goes way too much inside there. Lou gets a bump. We get nice. Well, that wasn't that nice of a touch. And now Crazy Cat has a pretty free finishing round. He just needs to get the end, play it safe. Went for like a middle tier line, I would say it. And closes it out and pulls out the upset as now Ziren is actually going into the lower round due to that. And uh, Luckier then gets fourth place, where Luckier is gonna have to play against Arvito and Marcelli. And with that, Ziren loses his first match to Creedy and Crazy Cat, which is, uh, I would say, the biggest unexpected <laughs> match that we got here today, but. Yeah, we're gonna go on a small break and we're gonna go be ready with round two. And with a Baltic Romania Championship solo event, we're gonna look at the top match between Morioka, Crazy Cat, sorry, Bits, Creedy, Arvid, uh, Bits, Creedy, Auris, and Iava to see who from those four players are gonna be going into the 2 0 match. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Baltic Truck Mania Championship solo event. It's going to be time for our 2-1 round 2 of the Swiss. So if you want to understand what on earth that could mean, you can do exclamation mark bracket and see the matchup. So we're going to be having a look at the 1-0 match. So all of these four players have a win under their belt in round 1. If we can do a small recap for the matches that we have happen in the round 1. It was that uh, Morioka, Arvito, 
uh, in the match one, Morioka won against Pitts, uh, who plays second place, and Arvito got third, so Arvito then moves into the lower round. He has to play against Luckier or Marcelli. In match two of round one, Greedy won the match uh, with, together with Crazy Cat against Ziren and Luckier, which was, uh, I would say, the biggest upset we've had today, so far at least. In match three, Auris and Karluki uh, went um, above of Hapux, where now we're gonna see uh, Ziren and Seamet Auris playing in our match right now. And in match four, Dvigno won uh, together with Iava uh, above Marcelli. So now the round one matches, uh, round two matches are in the other upper match is between uh, Morioka, Crazy Cat, Karluki and Vigno, which guarantees at least one Latvian player in the 2-0 round. Uh, the other 1-0 match which we're gonna be watching now is between Ieva, Bits, Greedy and Auris. So the match previous winners. So each match has like the first place and two second places of uh, round one. And there's uh, two lower matches happening as well between Ziren and Hapux. So we have a seeding match to determine which match they will have in the 1-1 rounds. And there's a match between Arvito, Luckier, and Marcelli as well. If there was other matches going to be still going on after this one is done, we're going to check them out as well if they're going to be still running. But this is going to be the match of the broadcast between Eva, Bits, Creedy, and Auris. The top two here moves on to 2-0 match, which is actually going to be already the qualifying match for the playoff bracket. The earlier the players finish into the Swiss, uh, basically they close out the Swiss, the earlier they do that, the faster the higher seed you're gonna get into the next round. So here do a small introduction of the players. So one of them we have Eva. Uh, Eva has been competing since uh, the TM2 when Chuckmania 2 Stadium was the main game when competitions played in the very first Baltic Chuckmania Championship in 2020 as well. Uh, not to confuse 2020 when was still Chuckmania 2 Stadium was still active. It was held before the new game came out or currently this game. Uh, and only in summer 2023 season got her first top 8. I believe she also got top 12 in the Comic-Con Baltics event last uh, autumn. Then we have Bits. Uh, in early days was one of the most highest prolific players in the Baltic scene in the first Baltic Leagues. Had the, bir had the most wins as well. Uh, but uh, lately during last year hasn't had the best performances so far. But... Uh, he actually during the last two events hasn't gotten even a top 8 in a BTL. So we did get a top 6 in the Comic Con Baltics. So let's see what he can do here. Greedy as well. Kim, similar same boat as Bits. Had a pretty solid start in early Baltic leagues. But it looks like to this time for this event he wants to break in that top 4. I was speaking with him a bit and he wants to get that top 4 this event. So let's see if he can do it. We saw him closing out the previous match as well. As we know he gets the opening round win just above Auris here. And so it's a really good standard for him. And if he continues to play his game, he could potentially close out as one of the top seeds outside of Swiss. Yeah, and the last player we have is Auris, uh, the Mr. 004, the new fourth place curse. Not only in positions, but also in time as well. One of the more known names internationally, I would say, from the Baltic scene. But actually has never won a single Baltic tournament. Has been really close. I believe with third place being his best placement. In the last Baltic Truck Mania League, he did get fourth place. Same with the Baltic Truck Mania League Spring as well, where he got fourth. And in uh, also Comic Con Baltics, he got fourth place. So just saying, if someone wants to joke around me in the first fourth place guy, Auris has more fourth places in Baltic tournaments than me. Just saying. And every single event he had during 2023. From Bal that were Baltic ran, he got fourth. Just saying. <laughs> so hopefully he will break his curse this time as uh, Greedy gets his first win. But sadly, Auris just validates his curse as he gets uh, at fourth place here in this round. But let's see what he can do. Practice as we have a 20 and a very very satisfying 20 10 10 10 in total total point standing so far. Also, only wins I believe Auris had was actually in his university hosted events. So in his school there were a bunch of Chuckmania tournaments where he won all of them. And actually next week there's gonna be an a Lithuania only event as well. With the highest prize pool they have had for Lithuania only events. 
with 200 euro price pool, uh, which is uh, hosted by InfoShow, where they're gonna also have a, a Trackmania tournament in their LAN event as well. It's gonna be for Lithuania. So there has been a lot of competitions in Lithuania, which Auris has won it endemically, as he wants this round as well, even above of Ziren and many other uh, Lithuanian players. But every single time he has to play in Baltics, that 4 play score just kicks in too much. But yeah, from this match, the top 2 players will be going on into the 1-2-0 uh, round. It's gonna be the qualifying match already for tomorrow as the top seeds for the bracket. So that's the main thing they're playing out for. If you wanna see how the bracket looks like in Volvi together with the placements and who plays in the other matches that are happening at the same time, you can do exclamation mark bracket. And see how did the seeding went in all the previous matches as well. A bit of a chaotic start as both Auris and Kredi uh, had a light touches early on. Bits and Eva now with the first starts. Actually, Eva trying to finally get her placements done properly. In the event, actually got a top 18 CD. So it gives a nice confidence boost, hopefully, for the bracket. Auris pull off the owned classic. Gets even goes for the inside line. Creedy does touch the inside line together with Yeva. Oh, okay. Yeva still holds on on that second blast. Very chaotic round, especially as we saw in the Latvian match that we previously. As Bits now this time takes his 10 pointers here. And I believe with that, he actually close, uh, jumps in in a tied second place together with Auris. So again, very satisfying points. Thir 30, 25, 25, 10, uh, 20. 20. Yeah, <laughs> 20. So they're going to Agartha. So every single round, all matches have the same map order in Swiss. So in the playoffs, in the playoff bracket, there's going to be a pick, 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 pick phase. Uh, done uh, when the matches start. But this time the map pool is randomized. Let's see how it will go on this one. The t one of the, some people call it the most challenging map, but let's see what happens. You have a playing for a killing... Esports Racing Southeast, which is a quite a bit of a mouthful to say, but it's easier to say just curse. Let's see what she can do in this match. Oh, solid start from everyone. Everyone gets the outside line properly as well. No light touches will be saw quite often. It's very, very easy to get that light touch in there. Auris gets the more inside line, so this is what I said in match 1 as well, as soon as you do a light recorrection in that ice part, you drop like 0.1 for every correction you do, especially if you don't get the angle even with the correction, so it snowballs quite a bit. Speaking of bits, bits currently at the bottom, Yeva does get the no slide, immediately goes down the list, really having a pretty solid match. Auris trying to cash in finally on this, really trying to risk it over the gaps as well. Gets solid exit, goes for the low jump, gets a very bobbly end. And Greedy is gonna take the 10 pointer here again. Greedy definitely looking as the, I would say the best player I have seen so far today from the broadcast point of view. Definitely having a nice solid consistency. He said himself he wants to get that final. No longer fighting for top eight, he put his barrier, or sorry, as some say, uh, as in Latvian, we say Latinia. So he put the bar a bit higher for himself and he's recently trying to reach it. He could easily get top fours previously in the previous like, Baltic events in 2021. I'm trying to get back on that roll once again. And come to think of it, I just realized 2021 was three years ago, <laughs> which is a bit of a gap. But yeah, either way, Auris and Kriti trying to forget for that top two spot here. Bits is really close. Bits actually gets a better exit line, gets a bit more momentum, especially before the free wheel part. So both get a very direct speed. Then Bits gets the overtake there. That's one small exit part. Oh, yo, yo, Auris went for a really sketchy line, but Bits had an even more sketchier line. Both Eva and Kriti immediately jump in the top three with that. Greedy went for a bit safer line. Always went for a full push there. Yeva got tried to full send the end as well, but wasn't enough. Always still snags in the 10 pointer right there. Greedy still trying to play it safe. He's getting that consistency going. Still pretty close gaps. One big mistake, and its position can be easily lost in the full point totem.
where Da Vinci, Da Vinci is currently in the other upper match, where he's playing against Morioka, Crazy Cat, and Karluki, which is happening at the same time. If Da Vinci plays good, we'll see him in next round. Or if this match ends and that one is still going on, then we can see a sneak peek of uh, Agvino as well. In the meanwhile, really good rounds here so far. Three players at the top. It's the one who has crashed out. And there's literally only a half a ten difference between all players. Eva gets the most momentum out of it. Really the one behind. Gets a solid drift there. Maurice gets a light bomb, has to recorrect his line, lose a bunch of momentum. He have actually now aiming for her 10 points there. Oh, greedy for sending the line. I mean, that is Eva bouncing out that part. And greedy with that again. Greedy and Auris trying to collect those top two points. Auris is playing way better than his teammates today. Like, Ziren is absolutely in the gutter in that match one. So, since Ziren really wants to win the whole event. It's going to be pretty hard, considering he even lost to the second lowest seed today. <sighs> considering, in theory, he had the easiest uh, lower seed match, but yes, Greedy playing good. Auris was seed number two in the seeding phase, Greedy was seed number four. And uh, Greedy definitely is showing his consistency way better than Auris does. Because Greedy only had one large mistake the whole match. Light correction with the ice slide, but still maintains the line there. Gets a nice half slide from Auris to keep the momentum going. Gets a better entry in the dirt as well. The light advantage goes a bit too much inside. Who keeps the skid marks closer at the exit point? Gets the most momentum for this part right here. Bit of a wobbly entry. Loses how to recorrect the line. Doesn't get the best momentum. Uh, greedy does it is. Doesn't get the best momentum for that part. Goes for the instant low jump. Tries to build up a bit more speed for this part right here. Auris uh, still holds on for that part. Very risky line there by Auris, but it's still enough to hold on the 10 points lead. And with that, he will still start to now close in the gap a bit to Kriti by getting those 3 points reduced now. But yeah, Bits and Eva, bit at the bottom now. Bits as well is currently the lowest seeded player from the seeding phase in this match. Where a bit uh, did was seed number nine in seeding phase. So if you look at the seeds uh, that were happening, so Auris was seed number two, Greedy was seed number four, Eva was seed number six, and Bits is seed number nine. Okay, our third map here is gonna be Calgario. Made by Rocket. Early mistake there from Bits, trying to force for that inside line. Didn't work out at all. Oh, Yeva tried to get build up a bit more speed. I always got it really good. Greedy had to recorrect his line there. So holds on in the top three so far. Greedy goes for a small release there, gets a lower jump. Wait, that's actually faster. Okay. Getting that low jump at the jump, trying to reduce the airtime there, gets in the grip there at the landing, and so pretty smart blind there from Greedy. Most to get Bay momentum going, I always had a way better setup, he is close at the bottom, but let's see who will get it. Higher jump from Auris, but Auris still gets in first, and Auris gets that 10 points. He was not too far away as well, but yeah, unfortunate start there from Bits, only secures him only 3 points, but Auris starting to reduce the points gap a bit as well. And also starting to run away from Bits and Eva as well. So also one thing to mention is that even, let's say, there was a scenario where Greedy and Auris close out their finalist. Uh, the third and fourth position, uh, even they don't close it out, their points amount still is valid for seeding in their next round. So if that, that means they would go to the one run round, since there's two matches in the one one. Uh, then they will get to play a bit easier match if you are in third place than fourth. Which is going to be really important in those 1-2 uh, two or 2-1 two, matches. Of course, you want to be in the upper side, the lower side. And one interesting thing about this format is that in 
in round four and round five, instead of having four players in a match, we have six. So there's a higher chance of having multiple finalists and it's way a bit more pressured to close it out uh, properly. Okay, Bits finally gets his 10 points. Trying to secure his third place here. Even for the placements, Auris is the one who actually gets the bigger points. As uh, Creedy is only one who gets 7th with that. Auris actually now overtakes Creedy for the first place in standing so far. And even now falls off a bit. Really had to view just to start there three times, that's why he dropped in the placements there. Starts to opt for a bit riskier lines there. Bitsa once again trying to collect some points going now. First place once again. Chase down by Auris, who goes, tries to go for a wider landing there to get that earlier grip. Well, uh, Bits goes for a very more direct jump. Bits did play in Trackmania Grand League in beta season, for those who still remember that. I remember that was the way how I personally got into Trackmania, like reintroduced. Oh, Auris gets a better, better end and also gets a way better result than Bits with that snipe at the end. Creedy with a mess up in the center as uh, both three Lithuanians get the Lithuanian ace in that round. Auris starts to now run away with the points as there's nine points difference already. Just as we're only a couple rounds away from entering the first finalist attempts. Yeah, Bits starting to push on on his pace and especially consistency. Some result came away better now. Neva gets a bounced out there. Doesn't get the best line there with that. Had a really sketchy line there. Was really close to that left wall there. Still managed to survive. Well, dropped the gear as well. Greedy gets a bounce out. Loses the grip. Gets an insta crash there. Gets ping pong out to the roads. So there's a Lithuanian duel at the top, which Bist instantly loses. And now Eva gets the second place. So it's gonna be another Lithuanian ace with Auris taking the 10 points. It's gonna be really needed for him as he's gonna enter only four points away now from uh, finalist. And Zimindel gonna put him in the 2 well rounds for the playoff bracket already. We're gonna go on a map switch. This is gonna be Wavelengths. It's gonna be the map 4 for us. I'm actually curious, pace wise, who are the fastest players here? Yeah, so actually the fastest player here from these four players is Auris with a point twenty-three. Wait, this is actually really crazy. All four of these players are number five, six, seven, and eight on wavelength individually. And their PB difference is ridiculous. Auris has a point two three two. So point twenty-three two. Greedy has a point twenty-three eight. Uh Ieva has a point thirty-one eight. And Bits has a 37.5. So it's pretty close. The fact that uh, Auris and Greedy's uh, public times are uh, literally just six thousands apart. And as we saw in the qualifier as well, like on this map, basically all of top 10 was only two tens between each other. So let's see what they can do in rounds. Now their PBs is literally just uh, 0.15 apart. So one small release can easily put another player at the top. It's lagging out there, playing on good old classic Wi-Fi causes that. Thankfully, hopefully it doesn't lag on the server as well. We have seen that to not be the case, only big case on a spectator. Really sick rounds here so far. Otis gets the inside line over Eva. So you can land there a bit more on the left and snag the finish a bit early. And he does it. And with that, snags in the 10 points. 0.45. So, point 0.4 from world record here. And with that, Auris enters now in finalist. So Auris wins around here, secures the top seed here. In the middle, in the seeding match that happened in the lower side, Ziren won against Apux. So, Ziren gets the upper seeds from the all one match. Uh, 
all one, yeah, probably all one match. So Zidane's gonna be a tiny bit easier. One one match. In round three. But that basically guarantees Zidane. In the and hop hooks, at least in the one two round at least. But uh, then one one round will determine will they play the qualification match or the elimination match in round four. So it's gonna be pretty important them to get that seeding there as Auris touches throws away such a free round seed one finisher Eva gets a nice snag there with that mistake over nice overtake over Creedy gets those 10 points in as well it actually overtakes bits I believe as well points wise with that and also denies Creedy those 10 points as Creedy now needs to win a round if he wants to enter finalists if if Eva hadn't sniped Creedy would need to just get a top two now so it's a bit better for Auris in a sense. I believe it uh, in the score between the 1v1 between Auris, uh, Zir and Hapux, it was uh, uh, 100 versus 93. So there were some rounds that uh, Zir and dropped there. Yeah, Zir was the one who came out of. Alright, Greedy this time, trying to needs that win here to enter finalist himself for that top seed. Well, in this match, the top seed doesn't matter, you still want to just get a top two. The seeding really matters for third and fourth here. Oh, still close round between the players. Oh, this crashes the end, but still gets the finish. Greedy gets the 10 pointers. Eva gets the plus seven. No sets in stone a bit. That's seed number three. Or, Eva or Bits now have to deny. So Eva needs to get three wins in a row. Else, uh, yeah, it's gonna be... Needs to get lucky on this round. And then needs to get, yeah, basically wins afterwards. As both Auris and Kredi need just to win. They need to get that round win going. Both went for the risky line there. That's why they bounced in from that right side of the pole. All of them got the better momentum, bit tiny bit better start. I always try to recorrect the line, gets way better exit speed. Same with Eva. Creedy doesn't close out his marks that well. Better transition for Creedy. Well, not for that turn. And now Auris has a pretty nice opportunity here to close it out as Greedy is out of it, so less pressure there. However, Eva is now really the one pushing in. Auris has a bit of wider line, crashes out, goes full turtle mode there. Wait, how is wait, I haven't seen <laughs> what a CP respawn. Jeez, I haven't seen like that. But yeah, now Eva gets a free 10 points with that, and uh, she can close in on finalists as well for the triple finals, as there has been an absolute fiesta at the bottom. With 10 points gap. I don't know what Bits did there, but uh, yeah, Bits as well, and <laughs> surprisingly a close round, even with 11 seconds at the bottom. So Eva now is a one round win away. From entering finalists as well. As we have some results pouring in as well. So Arvito won a, on a match. In the 0-1 match above Marcelli. And Luckier as well. So our, our Luckier got third. So that guarantees now Arvito in the... Sorry, Luckier in the... In the 1-2 match at least. So we're gonna go on Nonpareil, one of the most straightforward maps there is in this map, well, made by Creedy himself, but there is double finalists now, this is, has been one of those closest maps we have seen. The average round here is around 48 seconds for winning time, 48.9 or 49.0 as the average time. So if they get a 48, it should be a guaranteed first place here, so you kind of have to low-key full send everything, especially get the end very nicely done with a lot of momentum holds. All four players here in the mix. Yeva also needs that first place to put herself in the finalist. Is actually leading here. I saw it just before the tournament started today. Got the nice finish then. Always goes for that low bubble. Did not go for that speech bubble as you know. Gif if you see on Baltic Discord or on Baltic Twitter. Where you can go at Baltic DM. Looks like Aoris with done with the best starts. And it's going to be first person to close it out and put himself in to the 2-0 round here. 
Yep as well, not getting that overtake on Kriti. Still solid round from everyone. But yeah, she needs to not beat Kriti into the 1v1 here. To get in the top round. Let's go Sweater with wider starts. Doesn't get the best exit speed from the Magnet landing there. He now just needs to hold out. Even if Kriti wins, Eva at least is guaranteed third place here. Oh yo yo, especially with that. But Eva gets a really nice exit. Kriti had to readjust his line. Dropped a lot of momentum. Allows no Eva for the overtake. Oh, that's a really risky line there from Eva. Gets good speed there. Goes immediately ahead of Kriti, who gets the low jump. Goes for the center point. Both went for the low jumps there. It's very sketchy to aim it, especially with the angle that the platform is there. Eva tries to build a bit more speed, crashes out, tries to risk it for the inside line. Greedy gets now a free 10 points, but he gets a lot of speed. He needs yes, to get the last turn good, and he gets it. And with that, Greedy gets the second place here, and Eva gets third. And both Greedy and Auris put themselves into the uh, top 2 0 match, which is the qualifying match at the top. But let's see if the last match is still going. Looks like... Looks like all matches have concluded. So in the other 2-1 uh, match, it was Morioka winning above Dvigno. So Morioka got second. Dvigno got... Uh, sorry, Morioka got first. Dvigno got second. Karluki got third. And Karluki fourth. So we're gonna see every single Baltic country being represented in the 2-0 match. Which is gonna be happening in approximately 4 minutes or so.
All right, welcome back to the Baltic Mania Championship. It's going to be time for our round three. Round three is going to be the qualification match here in the 2-0 match. So we have only one 2-0 match. So all these are the players who have not lost a single match so far. So two of them are going to experience their first loss today. The top two players who are going to win in this specific match are going to advance immediately for tomorrow in the playoff bracket. The winner of this match is going to enter the double nation or playoffs as seed number one. The second place are going to be as seed number two. And the two losers then will have to play in the 2-1 match. It's going to be a six-player match uh, in next round. So here we have Greedy, Dvigno, Morioka and Auris who actually were the tippy top seeds from the seeding phase where Morioka was seed number one, Auris was seed number two, Dvigno was seed number three and Creedy was seed number four. So those are the four players that we're gonna have in this upper match. Uh, the winner as mentioned we're gonna secure a top eight here. Uh, only big surprises here I would say is Creedy if we just use the previous results during 2023 Creedy hadn't got a single top eight at all in any of the Baltic events but this time Creedy is like one of the biggest underdogs here Vigno was a final actually he didn't play stuff four in the previous Baltic Trackmania League summer but was the second place of Baltic Trackmania League spring Morioka uh, did not play in the spring season however he, he won and is the champion of Baltic Trackmania League from summer 2023 season and Auris is a finalist of uh, not only Baltic Trackmania Leagues but also uh, from last year but also the finalist of the Comic Con Baltics who was the only player uh, playing against Pam, Stuftz and uh, Elka. Alright so let's see what the players will do here. Marioka is defending uh, or the previous Baltic Trackmania League winner. Let's see what he will be able to do here in the championship. Will he be able to get the first seed? He has won every single match so far. He also played against Vigno in his first round. Was his teammate as well in the team event early on. So let's see what they can do. So Morioka trying to get finally. Can get his first place once again. Very close round there for second place. But that's too much of a solid round from Morioka. As he enters the next round with his early 10 points, but a really close round between the rest players there. But uh, Creedy is the one who just is just a couple hundreds ahead of everyone else. So the fastest player here, uh, based on the public match times on Calgario, between the players is Morioka, who currently holds the world record, who has a 50.9, uh, but uh, we haven't seen a 50.9 a sub 51 in matches yet uh, on this map except by anyone by Zire who did a 50.99 oh you have too many mistakes early on everyone tries to risk it and everyone crashes or makes a small mistake except for Morioka so Morioka gets another nice opener <laughs> of course something weird happens and uh, yeah light touch there and Vigno is the one who can collect the uh, three 10 pointers but now Auris has got up to Morioka, but Morioka is still in the fight for those seven points. Goes for the inside line, gets a very nice lower jump line there. Always does hit the finish, but uh, yeah, very chaotic round. But it's a good old classico what happens here. But Vigno here is now the Witten with the 10 points. So, as mentioned previously, top two players from this match will advance already for tomorrow as the two top seeds for the playoff bracket. Not gonna be done feared for today. So if you speedrun the group stage, you can immediately get rewarded and be just you can uh, spam some XDD in the chats uh, in the round four and round five. Marioka with a solid start. Oh, by his teammate from Vortex. Again, very deja vu situation from the first round. Morioka a bit ahead and very close fight for that second place. Recorrection there from Morioka. Drops a lot of momentum instantly. Auris and Vigno catches up. Greedy as well. Tries to force in the lines. That's, doesn't get the best line there. Auris is the one in the lead. Let's see what happens. A very risky line there from Auris. Gets the, with the, gets the 10 pointer with a point two. Morioka still close. Even with that light recorrection, still does a point three. But Auris finally gets those 10 pointers in. 
Morioka also playing a pretty solid match, not too big mistakes, just light releases that, that come from safing. line there from Morioka. Gets a jump in there with an inside line. Still stays into the top. Doesn't have that big of a lead as previous rounds. So all four players are between half a tenth. Now this is the one leading. Very similar lines from all four of them. Greedy the one with the better readjusted line. Gets way more momentum out of it. Oh, what a better line there from Greedy. It has too much speed there. Doesn't can't get to maintain. It's gonna be really close. What a good round there. Point one winning time. Point, keep in mind, point two three, uh, point three, point two three was the fastest time previously, and that was the last place here. What a good round from everyone, honestly. With a solid pace as well. Everyone did like point one, point two from world record there as well. So pretty good pace, really solid round. As we go on a map by Wizzy, Morioka is the one leading, Auris Vigno in close second, third as well, with Auris having two points advantage, Greedy currently in fourth. Greedy had a pretty solid round one, round two, had not that many mistakes, but this time we're actually, you know, the four best seeds kind of meet. At least from the seeding phase. We're just playing safe and waiting for others to crash. Doesn't really work out, but does work out time to time. So for big points, you really want a full send here. Uh, let's go. Let's see what Vigno can do. A player from Latvia, originally from Luta, but then moved to UK. Doesn't get the best starts. Oh, I set up. Actually, very interesting entry point there from Morioka. They kind of course like the mid outside, and then for that weird transition part, they go full outside to get the most speed. Very interesting entry point there. Well, Morioka managed to salvage it. The grip there, but doesn't get the best speed. Actually gets a good momentum here, what am I saying here? But still is behind of Auris, as they were both equal in during the ice parts. Oh, Dvigno gets good speed there, especially as he enters the free wheel parts. Doesn't avoid the wobble from the plastic wall hug as well. Immediately goes in a top three. Greedy with the mistake early on. Very close round here as well. Top three players really, really tight between Morioka, Auris, and Vigno. Too big of a jump from there from Vigno. Loses speed, but not as bad as Auris who crashes out. And Morioka gets an opening round winner there with a 0.5. I believe that's the fastest round we have seen today. Unfortunate bump there from Auris, but he had to send it. He probably saw the split, saw that everyone was between 0.1. And Morioka again starts to run away a bit. A sketchy line there from both Greedy and Vignod. Vignod with the one with the mistake. Morris gets a bit of a bump from the rings. Oh, sorry, it was uh, Morioka, the one with his first mistake of the match. Vignod actually gets the best start, so in this ice slide you want to get the proper entry, so you have no adjustments during the entirety of ice slides. All players get it good. Let's see what happens here. Pretty close round once again. Vigno with the light advantage as well. Currently it's a tight position with Auris in terms of points wise. So getting that upper edge really needs, needs to get going here. Greedy as well is pretty close. One small bump from Auris and he instantly falls at the back. Morioka is not too far. One big crash and Morioka as well overtakes. And there's still a risky line there from Auris. But a solid pace there from Dvigno. Doesn't get the fastest match time. But still a pretty solid time overall. 0.5 there from Dvigno. Much needed 10 points for him. Which puts him now in second place. But that one mistake from Morioka. Still at the bottom. But still Morioka even with that mistake. Is still ahead by 7 points. Almost middle phase. Of the Swiss stage. Time with the slowest start. Always say Morioka gets it really good. It was a close 1v1 for the top. Recorrection by both of them. I always had to do recorrections. Light micro time loss there. 
to compare to one light bump there from Morioka. Makes him lose a bit of speed. Oh, yo, yo, what are both of them touched actually? <laughs> both Auris and Morioka have a light touch, but nothing too major. But it does allow Creedy to overtake. Creedy now finally getting. Trying to get his 10 points as he is currently at the bottom of the list. Auris has one of the highest consistency. Issues at the end, tries to save the ends, but Morioka gets got with a bit more speed, did not get the overtake. I would still hold on on the plus seven there. Not the fastest match time, but um, a win is a win. And with that, Greedy at least gets gets a bit closing in on Vigno. But what a good start for Morioka, keeps the grip free even from the plastic, really this time with early mistake. But he can't get the consistency rate from uh, his first two matches going here, especially with the pace that's kind of required to get the big points here. A recorrection from Maurice gets a bump as well, Morioka gets at least a better ice slide, but his entry in dirt wasn't as best. So it's almost equal with Vigno. Maurice as well is only 0.1 behind. A bit better momentum from Vigno, but Harley could handle his speed, but still is on the line. Really, really close compared to Morioka. Maurice is also pretty close there. Got the earlier regrip. It's a tiny bit more speed as well. Let's see what happens at the end. Very risky line there from Maurice. Hits the cactus, gets the overtaken by Vigno at the end. That no steer line did not really work out at all. But Morioka gets the 10 pointer there. Greedy with that light crash there. Light. Cactus step. Last, uh, Auris, that second place securement as he's overtaken by Dwino by just one point. Good old classic cactus moment. Alright, time for non pareil. Non pareil is gonna, we're gonna see some really, really close rounds, I feel like. Or we're gonna see a bit of crash fest. Crash fits are a bit expected here, because this is the simplest map, and it's usually a bit of the, not really paradoxical, but um, ironic parts. But usually the easiest maps are the ones that cause the most crashes, because people keep the risking on the easiest maps more, and thus more crashes happen. So let's see what happens here. The easiest map of the pool, but the one that can force out the most crashes by the sheer amount that you need to risk to get a solid time here going, because everyone can do it. Especially approximately the top 10 here is I believe like 0.1 between each other. So let's see what happens here. No players between 0.1, Vigno having a bit more adventure start, let's see what happens, any speech bubbles here, very risky line there from Maurice, gets the most grip out of it, we see that like that small pixel difference from an early landing there, and still causes a bit more catch up there happening, Vigno had to recorrect his line, drop all of his momentum, especially for the entry part, in this part where you want to keep the speed 0.8, solid time there, especially for runs from Morioka, I believe this would have been like a world records a week ago, but now it's only 0.2 away from world record of how optimized it's getting. But either way, 10 points for Morioka. Still having a continuation of a solid match. I believe that was Dvigno. Went too much to the inside, got too big of a wobble on the magnet part, which made him drop the gear and get a slowdown from it. Still managed to jump over the third part there. Always having a solid drift at the start. Has to go for a wider line to maintain the speed that he got from the previous drift. So Morioka with a light recorrection. Loses 0.1. Oh, Auris got a bit of a higher jump there. Didn't get that low jump. Gets overtaken by Morioka due to that. Still pretty close fight there. Way better exit there from Pretty. Has to oversteer there at the end. Gets smoother landing there. Morioka as well gets it. Morioka more speed at the end and overtakes the Lithuanian. Auris and Ziren had such a strong performance in the team event on this map. But this time Vortex is the one who steps up here. Pretty now even closing into Dvigno now. Reducing the gap already. If you look at the bit macro scaled, 
3D, despite being fourth, is only still seven points away from second place as well. So we're seeing a bit of a Dvino moment. We're gonna see some complaining on Discord afterwards as well with from Dvino, but at least that's expected 100%. Solid match. Start off here. Oh, Greedy gets the best line there. Gets the most speed. Guy has more speed from Auris. Auris gets the better skid marks though and maintains his momentum. Auris gets the 10 pointer there. And that's much needed to secure his second place there. Greedy as well, starting to get some a lot of points here. As now he overtakes Dvigno in total standings. But yeah, Auris and Morioka still getting those big points there. Still allows them to keep the gap there. Interesting line there from Morioka going full insights. Not going for speedy lines, but went for a speedy line there and it went into a wall. Vigno trying to prevent the Discord messages going. Holding on top positions. Actually, always having a way more efficient plastic port. Gets in the top two as well. Always actually gets better skid marks. Gets better inside line as well from that. 0.7. I think that's the fastest match time I have seen on this map. I have seen Vigno doing 0.6 here, but that's time attack. In matches, 0.7, I think that's the fastest I have seen. We saw 0.8, but points, yeah, 0.7 is really good fast. Just basically to get a 0.7, you need to do everything efficient. There's only like some line efficiency stuff, that's like the only stuff that can potentially make it faster or skid mark wits or something, optimal skid mark wits, like that's kind of the main stuff there. So pretty good pace there. That means he got everything correct and only some micro adjustments were missing to get to roll with it. All right, wavelengths. Potentially map where we're gonna see some first finalists here. So Morioka is at 87 points, Auris is at 81, and Vigno and Creedy are a bit behind here. So important thing here to mention that Vigno does have the pu fastest public time with a 0.04. Morioka is fourth with a 0.23. Auris is also... Wait, Auris and... Wait, 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 listen. This is ridiculous. Morioka has a 0.232. Auris also has a 0.232. And Creedy has a 0.238. <laughs> so... Three players has PBs, two of them have tied public times, and Creedy is only 6,000 behind. It's actually ridiculous. But yeah, anyway, public t peak times is one thing, rounds is another. When you're trying to get that world record going here, as, as it looks like. Oh, Morioka gets a better header, way more speed here. Both being chilling players. Oh, that's a good speed there from Morioka. Gets the overtake there. Dvigno a bit more inside its side, actually. Dvigno got the more left approach. Morioka was the one ahead in the last checkpoint, so tiebreaker was resolved like that. Gets the 5-5-5 five, five, five by both of them. But Morioka is the one with the... With the points at the end. That exit speed line there that he took. Closing out the skid marks before the pull par. Really, really helped him there. Let's see if all players go for the right side line. So Morioka actually the one who saves it. it. Works out a bit well. But both Vigno and Auris with the right line. A bit faster so with that white line you do skip the oversteering from the plastic turn however you want to land on that road tiny barrier which allows to keep your straightforward momentum however if you're too fast you're gonna hit the wall so you need to exit as much as the inside as possible for it to be actually faster which is really really precise so that's why we saw the mistake from 3d there like Vignon, his free 10-pointer here. Only Auris is 0.2 behind. 
Oi, that's a very risky end there from Dvinho. Went full inside that left part of the finish block, but still gets the 10 points that are much needed for him to close in. Auris as well. And Morioka just needed to finish this round. He could have went for some points tonight, but still got the round win in. And it's now the first player in finalists. Auris is at 93. So we're going pretty close there. Oh yeah, yeah, that bomb from Greedy went a bit too much to the inside and get the best grip. Where is Dvinho? Dvinho as well a bit behind with that. Greedy had the biggest time loss there with that part. Marioka now needs to win a round to secure himself a top seed into the bracket as well. Oh, this is really, really close there. Trying to catch up to Morioka. Morioka is still the one in the leads. Oh, it's close fight. Morioka gets way more speed. Oh, this is a tiny bit better line here, though. Oh, that closing out of skin marks for Morioka was way better. His entry as well for the plastic ending part is going to be the best. Will Morioka close it out? And Morioka will be the seed one coming out of the bracket as he secures the first place here from this match and enters a seed number one already into the into the um, playoff bracket as he puts himself into semi-final one so one more spot in tomorrow already so Morioka is done for today with that for oh, both Vigno and Auris Got a solid start going. Vigno is 12 points away. He needs to get two round, round wins to also enter finalized at least. But he needs to get three round wins in a row by denying Auris to get a chance to secure the seed number two. Well, Auris just needs to win this round and he's set. What a close fight. The denier versus the, the finisher. Greedy is out of this one. Really close round. Can Dvinho deny it? Dvinho has way more speed. Plus bomb from Auris. Dvinho goes full inside. Tries to be more efficient. Goes for the inside line. But it's enough still to hold it on. And Dvinho still holds on to 10 points. Still denies Auris the finalist. As Dvinho is now just needs to literally just finish. Next round and he's in. But... The thing is, Auris is still on the advantage where Auris needs to win a round and he's set. But we are going on the next map. Alright, in the meanwhile, we have another match that ended off. So Ziren won his 1-1 match above Ieva, Marcelli and Crazy Cat. Where both uh, Ziren got first, Ieva got second. And Marcelli and Crazy Cat got third and fourth. So with that... Ziren and Eva are going to be playing in the 2-1 match, which is going to be the qualification match in the next round. And there's going to be also an elimination match uh, happening at the same time, where Marcelli and Crazy Cat are going to be playing. Also, we would love to see if uh, which match do you want to see in round 4. Do you want to see the qualification match or in the elimination match? So, we're lovely to see that in the chat. See which one you can type one for the upper match which is the qualification type two for the elimination i'm gonna count the ones and twos afterwards i'm personally leaning on elimination since i want to showcase at least all players Alright, looks like this time Dvinho is the one who catches that. One imp important thing here to note is this is actually Creedy's preferred map of choice. So Otis is gonna pre have a pretty hard fight here because Dvinho is pretty good on this map and same with Creedy. So this is a very good chance now for Creedy to close it out. Uh, sorry, for Dvinho to close it out as well. As both Dvinho and Auris are both now on finalists, so both of them need to win a round. However, Greedy is at 89 points, but this is Greedy's best map. So let's see what happens here in practice. Vigno gets a good start. Greedy actually not the best start. Dropped whole point three at the start alone. 
Oh, got a good momentum there with the full dirt outside line. All three players are really close. This can be anyone's game. Really had to do a small release there. That's a weird line from Auris there. Gets loses. Sorry, by Dvigno. Drops a lot of momentum. Auris is the one in the lane coming up last turn. Greedy goes for more speed line. Auris very close. Keeps the grip. Greedy snipes it and denies Auris the finalist. But now Greedy is still on 99 points. That one small mistake earlier in the match where he could have be gotten 5 points instead of 3. Could have really played there a role. But Greedy is at 99 points while still both players are in finals. Greedy needs to win 2 rounds in a row here. He has a match at disadvantage by not being the only player in finals. However, this is his preferred map of choice. With having the fastest ball pick time between all the players in the entirety of the tournament here. Auris with not the best start crashes out. Auris needs a crash from Cre from Dvigno, but that happens the opposite. And Creedy the one with the mistake. Let's see what Dvigno does. Will he risk the end? Will he check the CPs? Oh, that's kind of risky line there from Dvigno, but he does make it. And Dvigno sneaks into day two. And Auris could not close out the finalists. And Dvigno goes to day two together with Morioka. And Auris with that gets third place here. And the seeding side of things. But with that, Morioka and Vigno finishing off their matches like that. And move on to day two. As we have one of the 1-1 matches still happening. So we can check it out here. So Auris is still not out, he's still playing, as we have here Arvito is moving on to the 2-1 round where he's going to be playing against uh, Zira and Iava, Auris and Kridi. And Karluki as well, so both Hapux and Bits are going to go into the elimination game, where both actually Latvian players managed to send the rest in the lowers. So with that, we have two matches now for the round four and I still want I saw way more twos than ones so the qualifying match is going to be between Auris, Kridi, Arvito, Karloki, Ziren and Ieva where top three are going to be moving to day two but we're going to be watching uh, based on chance requests the elimination game between Hapux, Bits, Marcelli, Crazy Cat and Luckier where the top three will advance into the final match of the day and the bottom two will be eliminated from the tournament. But either way, we're going to go on a quick break and we're going to start with a round four, which is going to be five player cup modes for the three spots in the last round and two players potentially facing elimination here on the tournament.
Welcome back to the Baltic Trek Mania Championship and it's our time for our first elimination match of today on the stream. We're gonna have to see the 1-2 match instead of as you see there's 5 players on the server instead of the regular 4. So here the bottom 2 players are gonna be eliminated and top 3 will advance to the last chance for them to qualify to the final brackets. The 5 players we have here today is Hapux, Luckier, Marcelli, Crazy Cat and Pitts. So we have seen two new names here, who are going to be the biggest underdogs here. If you look at the way how the bracket did a look out for each of the players, the highest performing players from these guys were uh, Hapux, as who is the highest seeds uh, together with Marcelli in this match. So in theory, Hapux and Marcelli should be the favorites, but the performance from like people like Crazy Cat was pretty nice that we saw in round one. For only the last sec where he actually managed to send Ziren to the lower side of the brackets and one of the reasons why Ziren is playing now at a 2-1 round instead of the 2-0 round. But yeah, at the same time there is also another match happening. Wait one second. We might have to restart the round here. I just realized something. One second, one second, one second, one second. Yep. I found the mistake. We might have to restart the rounds. Where is the server setting? That's a bit off. We might get a small server disconnect. So that's gonna be great. Can we please have Nadio ads? If you have the Cup Classic game on, please make sure the KO mode is disabled. Okay, thanks. <laughs> There was KO mode and only two winners. So they're playing till three winners and no KO modes. So that's the first thing. Have to quickly readjust that good old classics. No tech issues, right? Classic. All right. Three instead of two. <laughs> there we go. All right, now the match server should be up finally. But yeah, classics moment. No tech issues. Yeah. But yeah, it's best to notify it now than when you see, wait, the match supposed to still happen and it's ended, you know. But yeah, either way, we're gonna still gonna continue with this. We're gonna start the match a bit earlier as well. So I'm gonna ask uh, the players if they're ready and then we're gonna begin. Are we ready to start? Ah, okay, the match will begin either way. Okay. Okay, it's 20 seconds. No way to fight for five minutes, but yeah. Either way, without a small issue there, I was <laughs> you need to really double check the last round as well. Okay. Okay, last round also should be fine then. Yep. Since it's no longer four players, it's it's five and six. So top three here advance instead of two. Uh, so as best you know, for all players to properly close out their seedings instead of being uh, arbitrarily decided by points or some weird tiebreakers. So let the players close it out. But yeah, either way, this is going to be the elimination match of today. There's going to be five players on the server. Three will advance to the last chance in the 2-2 round, while two will be out of the event. So we have Luckier, a player who potentially is the lowest seeded player here from the match. Um, we have Hapux as well. He was actually seed number 8 in the qualifier. Uh, as well Crazy Cat, who actually managed to upset Ziren earlier in the bracket. And uh, Bits, who has... Uh, well, somehow he always ends up in these lower sides of the bracket, but then gets a good run either way. Alright, no one going for the risky line there. From the start, Seren tries to just wait for the other. So in this mod mode, points repartition is very similar. So it's 10, se uh, 10 7, 5, 3, 2. Uh, in the top matches right now, it's happening. There is 10, 7, 5, 3, 2, 1. So the top three is highly rewarded here under this system. Especially since there's more players, there's a bit of harder climb to do. So getting those big positions is really important. Because he can't done one with the best start so far. Luckier as well, everyone else is pretty close. 
Schmitz is actually the one with the slowest start so far. Oh yeah, yeah, Marcelli early bump there, bumps out everyone. Actually, is still in the mix. Crazy can potentially start his best start, bounces out. Still, it's the ten pointer. Actually, surprisingly close round from everyone, even uh, though Marcelli had that weird bounce out, but. Pretty luck crazy cat is the one who secures the points the best from the opening rounds Which could give a nice confidence boost here because every single win starts to matter a bit more than in the 1v1 you want Up puts the one now in the leads Didn't catch that, which was the player who had the early mistake. I believe it was Bits, but a light touch early on. Top four is still really close. As he can't get a bit of the skid marks, gets goes at the top. Lucky ever, Hopbooks and Marcelli are also really, really close into it. Again, another close round between all players. Light bump from Crazy Cat, lose a bunch of speed, bump rare from Lucky Error as well, still holds on the route, but drop the gear, what's happening at the top, and Hopbox is the one who secures the 10 points here. Pace-wise, they are around like 0.3 slower than the top match, but consistency is still pretty close, like, like, this would be, if I were playing, I would be around here, honestly. I think. <laughs> Here, gets a bit sketchy line there at the start. It's a more travel distance than the rest of the players. That's why he falls down a bit. No one still goes for that uh, risky line. I've only seen the top seeded players go for that crazy hard line there at the start. Night bomb there from Lakier. Up to the one only down the list. Oh, Crazy Cat had to oversteer re-release. Hold on that line. Bits is now finally at the top. Oh, Marcelli gets a good line there. Way better setup. Bits gets a bounce out. Gets immediately catched, caught up by Carl. Crazy Cat. Crazy Cat punches, bumps the sides. And Hopbox snags in the third place. Marcelli gets a te uh, the 10 points here. A bit's a bit struggling now. A bit of an all-order place match. Everyone can take it. Lucky are now the one falling behind. One early mistake. Immediately can fall down the list very, very fast. So we need to get those at least consistency going here. I saw the start from Hopbox. Good bits as well. It's a good start. Fastest time we have seen on no cut has been... Um, Uh, by Karluki, which is a 0.2 no cut, so that's the fastest time you can do without having a mistake early on. So lucky or actually this time at the top and instantly wrist pushes too much at the start and drops down the list together with Crazy Cat bits and Hopbox fighting at the top. Hopbox gets insta grip there. Immediately overtakes Bates, Marcelli is really close, risky line there from Hopbox still gets the finish line somehow. Yeah, Luckier sadly has to opt for the safe line, messed up the end as well, got overtaken by Crazy Cat, but now the non-Latvians are a bit running away a bit with the bigger points. But Crazy Cat still holds on the second place as we're going on a map switch. It's gonna be down tempo. I think some people have called it. This is the, for some people, this is the most technical map, just mainly due to the weird gears and uh, really risky lines. Like just to finish this map is not that hard, but to do it fast is really ridiculous. Especially with the final speed check where you can gain so much at the end. And probably the main reason we haven't seen that many 46s here. The world record here is a 0 0.4, 46 4. But getting it right, especially for rounds, is uh, not that easy. Like 46 is in the first place. 
This is uh, such a one-liner map, especially the start. It's really tight, really precise. If you don't get it right, you instantly drop the gear and your line gets thrown out completely. That's why we saw three mistakes there early on. Four, sorry. Actually, luckier with that is now in second place. Trying to get his 0.7 points. I'm chilling in the moment in the lead. Oh, what a weird line there from Lucky. I don't know why he called accelerates during that turn. Let's see what Marcelli does at the end. Light touch there just before the free wheel. Oh, he's not gonna make the end. And Lucky actually gets the 10 points there. And Hapuk seconds, bits third, and Marcelli. That light touch at the end cost him those a lot of points there at the very end. Unfortunate. But yeah, either way, Lucky gets 21. And now Marcelli is the one at the bottom side now. Bits and Crazy Cat having the best starts. Well, Crazy Cat not anymore. Light bump at early on. And puts the one at the behind. Oh, Crazy Cat got uh, the early regrip and got bumped into the pole. Oh, I'm not a fan of that Lucky Errors line right there. He goes full accelerate into it because he has to oversteer so much. Tries to play it safe. Uh, has a bit more speed than Marcelli, but Bates actually 46 8. Not too bad of a time. Crashes out four rounds and gets that one in. At least that's a really solid time, actually. Four rounds, especially. Like, 46s here are pretty solid. And now the leaderboard is just so all over the place. Now, Hapux is the one in the lead. Point says, haven't gotten that round win just yet. He's the player with less mistakes so far. Just cashes in on those second and third places. Doesn't get the round wins, but has solid consistency going. At least position wise. He's currently is leading around. This goes full inside there. It's for a line like that. Crazy Cat in the meanwhile in the lead, so there's three ways fight for the 10 points here. Ah, uh, Bits drops the gear there. Crazy Cat is the one. Oh, what a good line there from Hopples. He has decent speed as well. But Crazy Cat had. Both of them had the same speeds, but Crazy Fats, Crazy Fats, Crazy Cat's line there still managed to hold down on the top and gets to snack in those 10 points, which actually allows him now to jump in, yeah, like tied second, third place. I'm trying to escape the danger zone there a bit. Let's look at Block here. He instantly crashes, unfortunate starts, falls on down to the curse. And the tightness of the starts. Crazy Cat in the meanwhile gets a solid start going. Seven bits. It gets more speed though. Got more skin marks closer. Regrip from goes full full inside line. Oh, that's so risky, but still got a bump from it, but still got momentum going. Crazy Cat is still close in second. Hoplux as well. Getting that position consistency going, just so it's consistent, plus fives, plus sevens. Hasn't got a round win in. Oh, bits touches, and now with that, this is the thing that I was said. Hotbox again. Gets the bigger points in due to that. Everyone mistakes. Hotbox got those points in. Boom, zack. And goes in the lead. So yeah, very much needed 10 points from Crazy Cat. That kind of solidifies now him in the second place. Oh well, no, Bitch and Marcelli are now in the back, and sadly Luckier didn't get to get those points in at the very end, sadly. Time for Agartha. I'm actually curious about the peak times on Agartha, so let's check those. So the fastest player out of all of these is Hapux, who has a 101.64. Crazy Cat has a 101.67, Bates has a 101.69, Marcelli has a 101.73, Lucky Error has 1 minute and 2. So he is by far, like Lucky Error is by far the slowest one, haven't brought into that 102 just yet. 
But as long as he plays safe, should be still enough, then Sally does some workouts. Let's see what happens in the ice part. A lot of people touch here just because of the awkwardness of the turn. As you can, the one in the lead, Marcelli and Biggs close behind. Got a better setup point for the top two. Marcelli bits, but trying to escape the depths of the leaderboards. Crazy Cat now is trying to rival for that first position. It's a top seed out of this match. Pretty close fight there for that second point. And there's a pretty big difference. Who gets seven? One gets three. All bits gets the most speed, and it's hotbox even more. Marcelli only gets three points out of it despite being really close in the rounds. Yeah, can Luckier at least finish this round? Had that early unfortunate start in a mistake. But yeah, with that, Crazy Cat gets another 10 points. And since Hopbox only got five, only three points gap there now. Okay, let's see what Marcelli can do. Set for setup, pulls out the skin marks at the end. Very nicely done. Good speed at the end as well. Faster than Hopkins as well. Hopkins takes the ice slot. Ooh, that's sketchy. Have to do the recorrection. Bit of an oversteer there. We'll have to take a salvage line. Didn't get the re-rip going. Where is Luckier? Luckier crashed out. I'm represented from each country in the top three so far. Hopkins the one in the lead. Crazy Cat really, really close here as well. It's got a tiny bit better line and entry for the second last turn. Oh, light touch there. Where is Marcelli? Marcelli is gonna close in on that. It's the overtaken Bond bit. Like your minimal bit too far behind. Hopbox was like gonna close out the first there with the 101 here. Crazy Cat as well. So Crazy Cat and Hopbox starting to set themselves in a bit more comfortably into the top two getting a bit more cozier in those top two positions as there are now over 14 points lead over third place but for bits and marcelli and luckier it's not that comfortable at all for them just two of them will be eliminated from this tournament in this match Uh, Pokes light touch. This open source for luck. Crazy Cat now to get big points for our players as well. As Bits crashes out. So Luckier and Marcelli are now in the 1 and 2. Trying to finally score the big points here. What players are the teams that are the lowest in the leaderboard right now are leading the race? So they're getting the big 2 points. Very unfortunate bounce there from Luckier. He's instantly overtaken by two players, but Shelly gets to those slides. He doesn't get the salvage, and we go back to El Clasico of this match where Hopbox and Crazy Cat get one and two. Oh, that's not a good line from Hopbox. Managed to salvage it just before the free wheel parts. And at least Luckier gets the plus five, but that plus ten or plus seven could have been way better. Then in that situation, but now still Crazy Cat now no, it's only three points back to that bottom part. Ah, oh, if only Luckier could have snagged the win there, which was really really doable. Maybe he can do it this round. There's a couple mistakes from others and he can instantly be at the top and escape the depths. Shelly now also trying to escape the depths. Is the one at the bottom of the leaderboard. Beats as well. That's a really good ice slide there despite uh, having not the best starts. Yara falls down the list a bit there. Beats aiming for that plus seven, but gets too big of a bounce, gets overtaken by Marcelli instantly. Same with Crazy Cats. Even luckier as well. 
a little widespread round here. See any big mistakes at the end? No one crashes out, only one crazy cat gets overtaken by bits at the end. And Hapuk scores a 10 point or no, runs away now, even from, uh, from crazy cat now. All that build up that he was managed to get that seed one, at least to enter finalists first, and in the end, one small bump and one small overtake from Hapux, and instantly the points lead is has increased by whole ten. All right. In the meanwhile, Bits and Marcelli one point away each. If luckier as well, gets a bit lucky. can get some big points here as well going. We have seen a lot of mistakes, especially from Estonians. So a small overtake then definitely can be quite doable. Jelly gets a good start, same with Bits. He can't as well in the mix. And Bits crashes out, goes for the reduced air timeline. Doesn't work out at all. Gets overtaken by all four players instantly. But the main thing in this lower match is who is the most consistent. Has been Hapux and Crazy Cat. For every other player having a bit too many mistakes. It's like Crazy Cat will take the lead. Actually not too bad of a time, 0.5. Jelly and Hapuk's very close behind. Luckier sadly doesn't get the end going, and uh, Place will get a couple of points in. But yeah, Luckier is the one who's quite struggling on this one. But either way, still a close fight there. Marcelli now overtakes Bits for the third place. Hapuk's is now on a potential chance for an overtake. Uh, sorry, if, if he Hapuk's gets the top two, he instantly enters finalists. Which can secure him in the next round, but doesn't happen this round. Now we can open points to finally for uh, Bits and Marcelli to gather something. Or maybe Crazy Cat or Luckier as well. Just to be done with this match and not be eliminated from the event. Bits this time gets the start. He can't have to readjust his line, rather to lose point one and to completely crash out. Looks like Bits is gonna be the one overtaking Marcelli. Two players who are currently in the middle of the pack, and Crazy Cat even snacks, snacks in Marcelli. Hapux even gets the overtake on Luckier, who messes up the end. I believe with that, actually, Bits now overtakes back Marcelli for the third place. In the meanwhile, Crazy Cat and Hapux are both in the center. So Crazy Cat or Hapux need to get a top three and they're gonna be both in finalists. with the slowest arc. He needs a top three in this round to put himself in finalists. Hapuk's in the same situation as Crazy Cat. Marcelli and Bits are trying to gather points to get rid of elimination as much as possible. Same case with Luckier. So three bottom players right now in the top three. Only Hapuk's not crashing, but Luckier bounces back. Luck both Latvian players having that sketchy line in the middle. Let's see what happens at the top. Bits gets a better setup and Bits gets the round win. Very, very good round from everyone. Hapux now gets the first play. Actually, really close between Hapux and Lucky uh, and Crazy Cats. Both were players were two hundreds away within each other, and Hapux the one who enters finalist first. So Hapux on his first attempt. If Lucky Error hears this, do not do a full steer when you start off on a finish block. You lose a bit of speed. That's why everyone starts steering or full steering. 
a bit after the round starts, but he holds the direction button, he drops like 300. <laughs> Where did Bits went? Bits completely yeeted out of this one. Crazy Cat on his chance to deny some points from everyone else. And enter finalists. Marcelli as well. No, with, especially with the mistake from Bits. Gets some big points. Lucky or gets an upside down finish in the third place as well. But where is Bits? I don't think Bits is going to be able to finish. Okay, he will. Okay, he will, but... Yeah, only two points. But now Marcelli gets seven. And now we have dual finalists in the top positions and tied 84 points for the third place. So we're gonna go on non parale Let's see who's gonna be the most consistent here. I wanna see some times what players can do on this map. Um, I don't think we'll see... Well, maybe we'll see a 48 in this match. If I look at the players... Marcelli is actually the fastest all of these ones. So Marcelli is the fastest player out of the matchup here. However, he has a 0.848. Arvito is only 2,000 behind. Hapux is only 5,000 behind. Bits is another 10,000 behind. And then Crazy Cat is a 0.98. But that point I had made doesn't matter. Being slower if you are winning. It looks like Crazy Cat, the one had a great opportunity now to close it out. Lucky are getting a very unfortunate bounce there, gets completely tossed to the side, and Crazy Cat has pretty free round win here. Has a 0.6 gap. Even a pretty noticeable release will save him. Oh, that was a sketchy line there though. <laughs> and with that, Crazy Cat first person to escape the depths. As he goes into 2-2 two, two rounds as the first person to close it out. Marcelli gets the 7 points, goes above a bit into the middle part tiebreaker. As Marcelli himself is only now 10 points away. Exit. And as we have one player less, it's going to be way easier for other players now to collect some points. Shelly needs a map win here. On the rounds. Hopbox is really close as well. Hopbox was leading for majority of the match. Got sniped by Crazy Cat at the very end. Hopefully he can close it out. Marcelli is really close though. Light bump there from Marcelli. Drops a bit of speed but still holds the momentum. Let's see if Marcelli can deny it. Better skid mark with from Marcelli. And it's gonna be Marcelli denying it and entering finalists himself. What's happening at the bottom? Makier gets the five points. Well, let's see. While your match isn't casted, we did a vote between the chatters which map to watch. And the majority of people said for the lower match. As uh, this is the time where we might see the last time some of the players here, especially looks like the bits. He's on a downplay card as there's a tight match between Hapux and Marcelli. Oh, what a weird jump button. Turns out Trackmania does have a jump button and Hapux pressed it. Oh, lucky or unfortunate touch there. Could score some big points there to get a higher standing. Looks like it's a fight between two Estonians. Marcelli potentially closing it out. Bits doesn't have the best match. He's, he's not too far away from finalists himself. This looks like Marcelli is actually going to deny Hapux. Hapux was leading for the entirety of the match. And still hasn't closed it out. 
But Marcelli with that also moves on to the 2-2 match. Bits as well. Is the top two away. Maybe Luckier can get the snipe in here as well. Luckier with not the best start. Hapuks are getting a sketchy line there. It's a duel. Who stays in? Bits wins this 1v1 duel at the top. He gets 10 points and instantly jumps into finalist. Hapux wins this. He eliminates Bits from the tournament. Let's see what Bits can do. Bits risks too much to the inside and looks like that will be Hapux closing it out in the third place. Finally closing it out. Finally. But with that we have Bits and Lucky Error eliminated from the tournament. Where Crazy Cat, Marcelli and Hapux move on to the 2-2 round. Alright, let's see if the other match is going. If the top match is still happening. Let's see what's happening. The top match right now is... Our is Greedy, Arvito, Karloki, Ziren, Iava, where top 3 qualifies to tomorrow. Looks like we're closing in on very close. Auris has qualified as seed number 3. Greedy as seed number 2. So it's now a fight for who will be the seed number 4, uh, seed number 5. And who will qualify to the next round here. Two players going for the risky land, both Arvito and Ziren. Ziren is still not managing to go through. We look at the standings. Ziren is at 95 points, Karloki at 84, Iev at 75, and Arvito is the one at the bottom. Ziren leading around just above Iev. Ay, 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 ay. Small golf there. Why did Arvito DNF though? snacked in some much needed points. We're looking at the one in the second place. He's 84 points away, but Ziren now with that gets into the finalist mode. Where is Ieva? Ieva as well gets 5 points. So now Ziren trying to close it out now. Karloki is one round win away. Yeva is two rounds win away. On Karloki's map as well. Let's see if uh, Ziren can finally close it out. Ziren goes for the risky line. Crashes out. Same with Arvito. Yeva and Karloki now in a duel for the 10 points here. They're trying to qualify already. Early on, looks like Karluki gets the best speed there. Oh, what a biscuit jump there. Why did I DNF though? So, Yeva's still in. Two players both gonna get the bigger points. Of course, Karluki wants the bigger ones. And looks like Karluki touched the wall there. Yeva starts to catch up a bit. And Karluki touches the wall! <laughs> no, doesn't finish it. And Karluki crashes out, only gets 7 points out of it and is still out of finalist contention now. That's so unfortunate. He could have been in finalist, just risked the end a bit too much. And he could have been done potentially with this match. Zinan once again on another opportunity here. Goes for the riskier line, gets it very well. I think that's one of the most efficient ways so you can get it. Is a whole point twenty-five ahead of second place with that. So Ziren just needs to hold on his first place. Light touch there from Arvito. 
Insta DNF, Skarboki as well doesn't get the best line in there. Ziren crashes out. I'm not too sure why Rito DNF, he would literally be at like 70 something points. And now, wait a minute, Eva now goes <laughs> into finalists. Wait a minute, we'll have triple finalists here or something, huh? Oh, what is Karloki doing? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Zira Narvito playing the DNF game. In the DNF community, what is this? I sense some tilt factor. As we have triple finalists now. On wavelength. The Eva, Karloki, and Ziren. For the fifth spot. On the fifth seed. In the playoff bracket. Karloki gets a really good safe line there. Vito and Ziren gets a good time, good start. Unfortunate bump there from Marvito. Bit of tilt factor coming in. Close fight at the top though. Ziren with a light advantage. Light bump there as well. Yav at the bottom as well. Ziren only 0.2. Behind. Kaluki on a good chance to close it out here. But we have seen him mess up the end. Oh, that's a sketchy line there from Karluki. Still holds on on first place. Well, what happens at the end? That's a risky line. And Karluki upsets Ziren. And Ziren with that only gets fourth place here. With the Eva and fifth are Rito. So, so with that, Ziren and Eva. And Arvito will have to play the fat last match to get into the playoff brackets. So the last match, wait, they actually have nicely like two Latvians, two Lithuanians, two Estonians in the final match. That's kind of nice. So we have Ziren Ieva, Arvito Crazy Cat, and Marcelli and Hapuks. And three of them are gonna be eliminated, and three of them are gonna qualify for tomorrow. But here. GG's to Auris, Creedy, and Karluki for making it to day two. Well played. Uh, but in the meanwhile, we're gonna go. I'm gonna hop on a small break, set up the servers, and we're gonna be here with the last match of the day. So let's go.
Holy spicy Discord, jeez. So if you want to see the banter that's going on right now in the Discord, you can join the Baltic uh, Truck Media Discord. See some uh, people having interesting, uh, you know, challenges here and there. I just say like that. But yeah, either way, it's time for our last match of the day. It's our 2-2 match. Six players here. We have Arvito, Hapux, Iava, Crazy Cats, Ziren. Uh, yeah. And let's see what happens here. Have I added... God damn it. One second. Without... Why am I seeing this? Turns out... I know why I'm seeing this. One second, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Put all classic tech issues. If you want to help me with running events so we don't have tech issues, please write me on Discord so we have, you know, get things running a bit more efficiently in the future. Just saying. It's nice to have someone double check everything if it's, uh, you know, if it's good or not. Just saying. All right, let's see. Either way, it's going to be time for our last match of the day. It's going to be the Swiss 2-2 round. You can do exclamation mark bracket and see how it will unfold. So we have six players in to the last match. Top three advance to the playoff bracket. Bottom three are eliminated. There are some interesting names here as well. So we have also the, the six players who are here are Ziren, Ieva, Arvito, Crazy Cat, Marcelli and Hapux. So those are the players that we have in this match, match today, right here, right now. Gonna be a banger. So it's gonna be the same format, 100 points cup mode, 10, 7, 5, 3, 2, 1 points repartition. Uh, players need to close out finalists to move on. And uh, the position when they finish is also gonna determine their seeding for the start of double limb playoff that's gonna be happening tomorrow. It's gonna be pretty dope. All right, let's see what's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm very curious. I saw some spicy situation happening on the Baltic Discord, so let's see what, <laughs> what happens in practice. So Yeva was actually pretty solid top eight contender as well. So we have already five people set place in the brackets. We have Morioka as seed number one, Vigno seed number two, Aura seed number three, Creedy seed number four, Karluki seed number five, which uh, I believe has been the best performance from Karluki at a Swiss stage in Baltic tournaments. But for some other people, this has definitely not been the case. We have Lily top three player, Arvito, from previous Baltic Trackmania League season. We have number two from last Baltic Trackmania League season, Ziren. Also, in the 2-2 match, we have Ieva, who was top 8 in the previous season. Hapux and Marcelli, who are a bit of the bigger underdogs in this matchup as well. Same with Crazy Cat. But Crazy Cat has had a, has had a lot, pretty solid match here as well. Oh, Kaluki had a... Oh yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, I remember now. You beat Auris and uh, Uzi. Yeah, for much. Alright, but yeah, Ziren is definitely not the player who was... I think no one expected to see Ziren in this part of the tournament, so she has a pretty solid start here with a point two. But Crazy Cat as well gets the big points here. We pretty have a cool situation where we have two Lithuanians, two Latvians, two Estonians in this final match. So there's gonna be one country that will send at least two players into the playoff. Right now, the country where partition is there's two Estonians, two Latvians, and only one Lithuanian in the playoffs just right now. People said that Latvia isn't the biggest mud of, of muds, but there's at the same time, there's a good chance for Latvia to have four players in the playoffs, which actually would be pretty cool. See what happens in practice. Marcelli, the one leading, going by his teammate Arvito and Crazy Cat. Ziren not having the best rounds. Had a really good round previous time, but he's right now fighting with Hapux at the bottom of the leaderboard. 
Uh, very, very wide line there from Arvito. Looks like Marcelli could score the big 10 points here. Didn't have the best match previously, but has a pretty solid momentum going here. As he gets 10 points. And Zidane only gets one. With that, actually, Hapux now is at the bottom of the leaderboard. Yeah, Crazy Cat, Marcelli, Zidane. The top three after two rounds. Let's see what happens here. Gets the best start, has the best match time on this uh, on this map at all. As he crashes out once again, I'm personally seeing a bit of the Jehu vibe in the first round. Personally, how many of these six stay still stay in the event? Uh, three get eliminated and three qualify as the three bottom seeds in the double elimination bracket. So three go out, three qualify. Crazy Cat and Eva having goods. Oh, what a clip there from <laughs> Crazy Cat. He got like forced into the sides. Oh, what a good round there from everyone at the top. Well, isn't the fastest time, but it's a close round overall. Crazy Cat gets the one with the 10 points. Marcelli with the plus 7. Arvito with uh, both Baltic Vikings players. With a top uh, second and third. And Ziren now starting to fall down a bit. As Arvito now overtakes Ziren in the total standings. a bit of a sketchy start. Hopkins this time not showing up. He was doing pretty good in the 1-1 match. Uh, sorry, in the previous uh, round 4 match, but this time not having uh, the best performance. Important thing to mention is that out of these players, Hopkins, Marcelli and Crazy Cat have never gotten a top 8 at a Baltic event ever. This is going to be a nice chance to get a top 8 here. Hapux crashes out. Try to risk for an inside line. To keep the pace with everyone. Crazy Cat sketchy line had to readjust. <laughs> How did he save himself? But gets overtaken by everyone else. Ziren finally bounces back. Gets the 10 pointers on the board. What a bizarre line Crazy Cat took there. <laughs> he like went outside of there. Still stayed on the road. But yeah, lost all of the speed there but still somehow survived there like survived it survived in a sense that he still stayed on the road somehow <laughs> that was bizarre but yeah either way Ziren gets the big points so getting here top three is really important in total standings crazy cat had really solid consistency going into this so that's why he's right now at the top even with a big mishap early on Ziren two round wins two round losses a very good metaphor of his uh, tournament so far. Now let's see if Hapux can maybe show off himself up. So Arvito and Ieva. Arvito was third place in the last BTL season. So he has a chance to not even be in the playoffs this time. With my Latvian bias, I personally would love to see both Crazy Cat and Arvito making it. Don't see a name and it's Ziren. Ziren is the slowest start. Ziren playing like it's early 2022. How on earth did he have a lost the gear there? I haven't seen players losing gear there, honestly. An unfortunate angle there. Ziren starts to force up the pace a bit, tries to push it quite a bit. Jumps in third place like that. Crazy Cat still holding on on top positions. Hopbox as well now at the top. Ziren is very close though. Let's see what Ziren can do. Okay, risk the ends. Gets a very efficient fight there. Has to be corrected though. Oh, it's gonna be close. Ziren still snacks in over Hopbox for those seven points, but Crazy Cat gets a big 10. Crazy Cat actually now secures the lead a bit more with that win. Yeah, but the only one with an I'm Actually, Hopbox getting third is also pretty nice. Now seem to catch a bit to the rest. Just a couple decent round wins in and you instantly jump up the leaderboards quite a bit. That 3-2-1 for the bottom three positions. 
really doesn't give you anything that much. Oi, yo, yo, unfortunate bump there from Crazy. He can still saves in and stays, but unfortunate touch. Marcelli as well touches the wall. Now Pook slides out there, still holds the momentum. So Ziren and Ieva. Once in the top two right now, Yeva needs some big points as so Yeva is in fifth place currently in the match. Yeva mentioned she wants to really get the fifth uh, top eight in this event, so needs to get the step up going. Ziren as well needs to get some decent rounds going, Doesn't ha haven't had the best tournament at all. Despite winning the team event and the country events, Hasn't had the best performance to showcase him as the top contender so far, despite the seeding. Arvito at least gets the 5 points. Arvito is very stuck in the middle there. Alright, with that actually Estonians are on the verge of elimination, or in the elimination parts. Actually Zireno climbs back into the lead. Everyone gets put in an absolute point cocktail. Ziren gets finally the big points, immediately jumps on the top of the board with that. Now the players have to recorrect the ice line. Ziren has no corrections but gets a touch. It's overtaken by Marcelli and Crazy Cat. Yev and Arvito are really close behind him as well. Oh, Ziren gets really good speed there in the freewheel wall hack plastic ball part. That's such a long word to say. Is there? Can we just call it in a shorter way? Like just call it like some kind of turn name. <laughs> so it's, I don't have to say it. Freewheel plastic ball hack part. Either way, Ziren gets the win there. Even with the touch early on, managed to. No, sorry, with the touch uh, in the dirt part, still holds a 102. Crazy Cat still getting the plus 7. Marcelli and Arvito are both tied. Wall stick? No, no, no. There's a freewheel block there as well. You have to put the freewheel wall stick? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds weird. Red block wall. That's one way to say it as well. Free wall stick. Rebel stick. It's kind of hard to say, but you know, let's call it Rebel stick. All right, solid top three actually at the top. Arvito finally is trying to score some bigger points. Ziren finally into getting the groove of the match, getting those first places appearing a bit more consistent. Got a good gear there at the end as well. Alpox currently in fourth. Not really the big points as if that they come from top three. So one small mistake from Ziren or someone else, and uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Arvito finally gets some bigger points. Marcelli gets only plus one. It, wait, this is actually huge for Arvito. I see he instantly gets a six-point lead here, and uh, closes in on Crazy Cat as well, who didn't have the best round there. And even Eva overtakes now Marcelli for that second place. Engine out stick. I don't know if that works well. Alright. Non pareil. Ziren was looking really good here on the pace wise. On this map. So let's see what others can do. Others now can also do 0.8, 0.9 a bit more often. So it can be a close match here. All right, let's see. Zinek has started to run away with some points, which is really, really good for him, especially because he ha didn't have the best match start. At least Ziren is getting a bit of route in the back of the groove. Let's see if everyone else as well. Never yeah, currently with the best starts. Just to get a bit more chelly. Crazy Cat, so Marcelli almost flips there, salvages the line, Ziren is actually in the middle of the field a bit. 
the correction from Marquito still holds on the line. Nieva and Crazy Cat fighting for the big points. Nieva as well on the verge of third, fourth place. So big points could be really needed for her. Uh, but that touch is not at all. That touch is not at all. Looks like can be a chance for Arvito as well too. And Hapux now. Hapux gets in second place. Arvito gets a better line. And gets the Latvian ace in the match. Crazy Cat gets the big 10 points. Sit and actually in last. And that reduces the points lead at the top. But both Latvian players getting the big points. Now there's a tie for fourth fifth now between both Ieva and Marcelli. Even with the small mistake from Ziren there and being the last place, that's still really good for him. And the global skin with things. Oi, 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 two mistakes. Early on, who was that? That was Ziren and Crazy Cat. The number one and number two in the leaderboard are currently down, so this chance for everyone else to get some big points for themselves. The two race leaders are out of it. Very close round there up top. Ziren even DNFs. So he could have at least collected at one point. He can potentially buy him back later. Marcelli gets his first round win of the match. So now we get a Baltic Vikings ace this time. Yeah, Ziren DNFs. That's uh, not that good for him. But now Marcelli gets the big points, being in fourth place. That's especially much needed. But Tarvito as well. Gets big points for him as they're now close on, closing in on Ziren for the final sport. Crazy Cat, unfortunate starts. At least he has a nice points advantage. Hopefully he doesn't DNF, at least collects that one point. Or maybe some other mistake pops out. Light touch there from Marcelli. Ziren gets a really good start. Rito as well, trying to get some big points. Light clip there, gets a nice readjustment there. It's a safer line setup for the next turn. Both Ieva and Arvito overtake Hapux with that. Hapux gets a decent speed here, but looks like positions are set in stone. Point eight there from Ziren. Good rounds time. And gets uh, big points on the board as he goes to 70. Arvito as well with the plus 7. Much needed for him. And actually, Arvito overtakes no crazy cat for the top positions. Oh, they are tight, sorry. They're now tight. And both Estonians are still at the bottom. Hapux and Marcelli need some points going. It's gonna be a bit harder. Of course, when the first players will close out finalists, there's gonna be less players on the field, so it's gonna be easier to catch up the points. We're still getting those round wins here. It's a pretty nice way to build some points advantage. Two early clips there. So then gets a solid start. Crazy Cat and Marcelli like that there. Lose Arvito a nice chance to secure to second place even more. Same with Ziren extending his lead in first. There's pretty wide gaps at the bottom, even both Hapux and Ieva pretty far down the leaderboards. It looks like Ziren is gonna be the one closing out, another 48. A lot of mistakes this time around. But still, the Latvian still managed to stack in the big points here. Despite the lack of pace from, uh, like, despite the early mistake from Crazy Cat. Still, the fact that Marcelli, Ieva, and Hapux got the mistake there. The top lead starting to expand a bit. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but there's a slight smile on my face. Because the two Latvians are in top three. I will take that. I will take that. But they need to still close it out, of course. Alright, let's check down tempo, pace-wise, how are we looking like? The fastest player here is Ziren, has the fastest time, at 0.68. Then next on the list is Marcelli, 0.87. Hapux then next, 0.92. Ieva, 47.0. Crazy Cat, 0.70. And yeah, that is the case. 
I don't see our yeah Arvito has a point two only. So Arvito is definitely the slowest player here. Marcelli, Hapux, and Ziren, the fastest players on the bunch. We currently do see that as both as Ziren has completely crashed out here. Oh, Crazy Cat, bigger mistake though. That's actually good news now for uh, Marcelli and Hapux. As they can escape the depths there. Eva going for a wide line, it's a bit more consistent. Oh, Marcelli almost hits the wall there. But it's finally gonna score some big points, which is actually good as both Latvians only get 3 and 1 each. So it just allows a quite a noticeable catch-up now with that. As uh, Crazy Cat had a nice 15 points lead, which has dropped only down to 4. That looks unfortunate. I've got the plus 7 now. Unfortunate start here. Who was that? That was... No, it wasn't Ziren, it was a blue car as well, so I was a bit confused. In the meanwhile, Marcelli as well, fighting for the big points, trying to escape the depths. Trying to get his first top 8 as well. So both Marcelli and Crazy Cat are fighting for their first top 8 at a Baltic event. Ziren having the better start. Abito is pretty... Okay, not that close. One small mistake from these two though, can toss the leaderboard, oh yo yo, what a risky line there. Good time there from Ziren, 0.84 in rounds, is pretty solid. And Ziren is at 92 points away, so Ziren now is one round win away from entering finalists and potentially closing out the 6th seed from the Swiss stage. Marcelli as well now, overtaking Crazy Cat for that spot in the playoffs. Crazy Cat had a solid start of the match, but now doesn't get the best rounds in now. Ah, another poor round going in a chain. Let's see what Hapox can do. At the same time, Ziren needs to get his round win in. And he can close it out. Close bunch of cars in the top five. Marcelli, Hapox, Arvito, Ieva. Very sketchy line there from Ziren. Still survives it. Arvito trying to hold down some points, bit of wide bump. It's instantly overtaken by his teammate and Hapox. Ziren currently with a solid start. Oh, gets a lot of speed there, touches the wall, gets overtaken by 4-5 people. What a close round either way. Marcelli is the one who scores the big 10. And Ziren only gets plus 2, so no finalist mode for him just yet. And Arvito gets the plus 7. Even Crazy Cat at least gets plus 3. Solid round from the top. But still, Ziren is a top 2 now away. So even if he had like, didn't get overtaken by that entire group. It could have been only a, like, a, like a round completion away. But no, he needs to get a top 2 if he wants to enter finalist. Arvito and Hapux with the early mistake. They were going for a wider line, try to build up a bit more speed. Sketchy line from Ziren touches the checkpoint. Crazy Cat right now in the top three. Crazy Cat needs to be ahead of Marcelli as much as possible here. Oh, that's good for Crazy Cat though as well for Marcelli. That's not good at all. Good end from Crazy Cat, potential overtake. Oh, whoa. <laughs> what an all red there from Yeva. Ziren got double sniped at the end. Two different lines. Crazy got overtaking and Eva snacking in at the end. And still with that, that denies Ziren the finalist. That double snipe there. That's really good for Crazy Cat as now he's tied with Marcelli as well. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, time for Wavelengths. We have seen Ziren here crash a lot. Let's see what happens here. Also, Ziren is at 99 points. So first round is basically to see who will he contribute to in the pre- Also, we saw Ziren here lose on finalist mode in the previous match. So that's why it feels a bit of a deja vu right now. 
Alright, let's check total leaderboard. Zidane 99, Arvito 83, Crazy Cat Marcelli both at 78. And even Hapux are a bit lower the list. Marcelli with an early mistake. Zidane gets to start really well, but there's four players just behind him. I think this is the most fun. Who will collect the most points to enter the finalist? Because it looks like the Zidane has the best chance of closing it out. Zidane with a solid start. Yev as well now, trying to escape the deaths from the bottom. Crazy Cat and Arvito trying to score at least at plus 5. Try to close out the finalists and enter the finalist status as fast as they can as well. Looks like Zidane is gonna close this one out, but not! He will crash it out. Yeva gets the big 10. Zidane does finish at least for his points, so he, but he gets only 5th. Hapux unfortunately gets only plus 1. But everyone else gets the big points behind him, especially the two Latvians who start to increase the leads gap over Marcelli, but Zidane is now on finalist. Zidane now look to, to look out for. Uh, he needs to full send this round to close it out. That's a good potential start, bit of a chaotic start from everyone else. Look like that everyone basically took a different line at the start. Oi 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 oi, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna do that. Ziren early clip now, instantly at sixth place. Will he try to still deny some points from everyone else? A Sapox early clip. But at the top there's a pretty nice fight for the big points. Yeva gets a big bomb, Marcelli needs those 10 points to escape the depths as he's in 4th place. Marcelli gets it in, Yeva crashes the end. Crazy Cat gets also the 5th point, so still, Yeva could have helped Marcelli there. Yeva could have helped Marcelli there with the bigger points gap, but still, this could have been a bigger gap. But either way, if Yeva had denied, Crazy Cat would be still in his 80s. Ziren again trying to go for a risky line, has to oversteer quite a bit, drops most of momentum there. Nieva gets a solid start. And with her going for a bit wider line, trying to build up with more speed, doesn't really work out, has to oversteer quite a bit. Ziren jumps back to second place, gets a better transition than Nieva, full sense for the risky gap lines. At the same time we have three players in 90 points as well. Oi, 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 crazy cat, unlucky touch there. Ziren is trying to really push for this first place here. Trying to close it out, but Yeva is really close there. Yeva gets better, better setup, but not better line there from Ziren. Ziren needs to just be straight and he will close it out. And Ziren has, can finally say a small few. <laughs> and finally closes in spots into the playoffs as seed number six. Two more spots left. Marcelli is starting to close it in. Marcelli is at 93, overtaking Crazy Cat. So Marcelli needs now a top two. One player is out. So better chance now to get the big points, especially as we are now at the end game. Finally getting a nice rebound happening in the scoreboard. Had a massive points gap but has st started to chase him closer. Crazy Cat, very unfortunate clip there, instantly gets last. Hapbox now the one at the top. The two bottom positions are now at the top, but same is Marcelli. Marcelli needs to get this top two. LC enters now the finalist where Marcelli get it and Marcelli enters finalist Hapbox. Still gets third despite the clip, but Crazy Cat and Arvito only get three and two points each. Oh no 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 no! Come on, why is it? No, why you why you why you why you why? Okay, Crazy Cat needs a top two finish.
because he can't close it out to enter finalists. Marcelli, all the time he was fourth, fifth, was starting to fight for that third, fourth. Can potentially close it out and put himself into finals. To give an idea for context, Crazy Cat and Marcelli have never been top eight at a Baltic event ever. Same with Hapux as well, but he's a bit too far down the list. Yeva has been a top eight, so this could be one like top eight size upset here. Marcelli has a great opportunity now. Crazy Cat as well had a, such a solid match, but now doesn't have the best pace. At the same time, Arvito can close it out. Both Baltic Viking players are on finalist. Yeva now also starts to get play a bit better game. But needs to get some big points. Unfortunate clip there from Hopbooks. Crazy Cat, good wrist there. Really forced the line. Forced wrist, wrist too much. Held still the grip from the tarmac in the previous section. Bounces out. Can only score two points now. Unless a really, really big mistake happens up top. Both Baltic Vikings players, two and three. Yeah, with the one at the top, trying to get those big points to be at 97. Let's see what happens at the end. Very safe jump from Iava. And Oli jumps now to 96. Narvito and Marcelli are both denied here. Hopbox gets the plus three, but only Crazy Cat now gets overtaken by Iava now. Two slots left, two finalists, but we have two players at 96 and 97. Crazy Cat finally getting the first place start. Mistake from Marcelli. Not gonna close out finalists this time unless something weird happens. Oi, 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 What was that plastic bounce there? And the furl somersault. Sub somersault? You know, that flippy thing. Just with the car. Looks like Yeva can close it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be hard. Crazy Cat needs to overtake Marcelli. Eva now enters finalists. But yeah, Crazy Cat is now one point away from entering. Oh no, two points away, sorry, for entering finalists. If Crazy Cat had just gotten there, it would have been fine. He would be finalist. But now, three way finalists now. Crazy Cat needs to deny. Needs to deny the big points. Three finalists, two slots. Plus Crazy Cat two points away. Bottom three are out. And don't make top eight, which is tomorrow. With those sketchy line there, Crazy Cat gets a good start. Light clip from, light clip from him. And with Don Marcelli, a really close unfortunate bomb there, but still salvages in, goes for a right and jump but loses the gear and flips the side but Hopbox overtakes so he can still enter finalist at least next round but we have one person closing it out here two baltic vikings players both teammates from the team competition trying to close it out who will be will be arvito or marcelli to buy high with jump from arvito and marcelli secures his first top eight at a baltic event and he denies his teammate he was all the most of the match, he was at the bottom, and now two Latvians who were top three for the entirety now need to fight against Ieva, who is also in finalist now. Oh my god, my legs are turning cold. I don't like it. <laughs> Man. Alright, Crazy Cat, a good start. Hapux as well. Ain't no way Hapus denies this. Yeah, Crazy Cat, unfortunate mistake there. Yava gets a solid end. Arvito is really close there. Had to recorrect his line though. Hapus doesn't get the best approach. Yava has a nicer setup. 0.17 ahead. 
Arito has a better line here though. Light clip from Eva. This is a good opportunity now for Eva to close it out. Low jump, very risky. Oh, ne. Ah, Nukasta's via. Nukasta's via. And Eva gets thirds. Rip. Man, I feel so bad. <laughs> but yeah, congrats to Eva, I guess. Sad Latvia moment, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and with that, Ziren gets first, Marcelli gets second, and uh, Yava gets third. Oh, no. Okay, my hands are even shaking on my side. I so wanted to see the Latvians make it through, but... Yeah. We need to now rely on Karluki <laughs> and Vigno. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Man, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be a bit biased. I generally want to see Latvians do good. I, it, it, it's, I don't know, I'm generally sad. <laughs> I don't know how players feel, but I'm personally really, really sad. All right, let's see how does the bracket look like. So Ziren is in sixth seed. So Ziren winning this match is in sixth seed. Marcelli. Congrats on first top eight. Is seven seed. And Eva as the eight seed. Wanted to get the top eight. And yeah. Alright, now with that, you can do exclamation mark bracket to see the matchups. And uh, yeah. Alright, semi final one uh, is gonna be Morioka, Kridi, Karluki, and Eva. That's gonna be the map match one. And match two is gonna be Dvigno, Auris, Ziren, and Marcelli. Those are gonna be. It's not gonna be single M, it's gonna be double M. So even if they take the L in the semifinals, they can still bounce back. We actually saw the last two in the last Baltic League, we saw, where Morioka and Arvito at the time lost their round one semifinals. They still both of them climbed into the finals. So even if they lose in the semis, doesn't mean it's over. But yeah, the final standings are looking like as this. Is that uh, Gratis and Rokas did not get a no notification DNS. So there might be a light uh, suspension for future Baltic events from them. Uh, Ziren uh, Rizen uh, could not attend the event, but he did notify. So there's going to be no suspension there. Um, then we had uh, Luckier in 13th, which is his l highest placement at a Baltic event. Uh, Bits in 12th, Hapux 11th, Crazy Cats 10th, Arvito 9th, and uh, the top 8 will be determined tomorrow. But yeah, anyway, that's going to be the wrap up for today. I want to shout out to Baltic Vikings who help contribute to the prize pool. I would also really, really appreciate if you guys could uh, check out the PayPal for Fast Points. Which could be really, really appreciated because these kind of small donations can really help events like this possible in the first place. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it for to today. Also, I want to mention that next week, despite tomorrow, is gonna be the last day of BTC. Next week, there's gonna be the Lithuania only event hosted by Inf Instala, Insala, I believe. No, it wasn't Insala. Info Show, correct? <laughs> A lot of E's in the starting. So yeah, it's gonna be hosted by them. And that's going to be a wrap up for that. So either way, tomorrow we're going to have the top 8 decided as well. We're going to crown who's going to be the Baltic Track Mania champion for solos with 350 euro prize pool on the line as well. So let's see how it will go. We have in the top 8, Morioka, Dvigno, Auris, Kridi, Karluki, Ziren, Marcelli and Eva. I think it's going to be pretty fun matches tomorrow. The semi-finals also look very, very fun. And I think every single match is going to be pretty dope. But yeah, either anyway, that's going to be it for me. And uh, make sure to check out the Fastpoint Discord and the Baltic Truckmania Discord as well as follow the socials. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow for the final of the playoff bracket where decide who will be the best player in Baltics in this event.